So we'll just wait for the advice, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if you want to start the meeting. But for now, po, um, yun pa lang po yung in attendance natin. We'll just follow up na lang din po. Uh, Sergeant John, please follow up lang po yung ating advisory council. Thank you. In the meantime po, sir, uh, we can have uh, our ano lang, small talks. Pwede na pong magkwentuhan uh, for now while waiting. Kamusta po kayo, sir, ma'am, uh, during our one month uh, ago? Did the responsibility and roles as uh, advisory council has already donned na po sa inyo? Kami ni Father, uh, every now and then nag-uusap kami. <laughs> Nagtatanong ako sa kanya, ano yung mga gagawin natin? Mga, may kailangan bang prepare agenda? Yun yung actually pinag-usapan namin the past few days. But we are so... Blessed and thankful dahil you sent the whole presentation kasi sabi ko hindi ko pa alam kung paano gagawin. So thank you Sir Ace uh, na talagang ano, spoon feed <laughs> yung presentation and the agenda. Thank you so much for ano, guiding us. You're always welcome ma'am. That's my, actually my, my role is uh, to be able to guide lang po kayo especially po yung mga bago po sa advisory council. And then yung pong um, kahit po veterano na kayo sometimes yun po yung ano eh um, may mga bago po kasing hinahatid yung CPSM lalo na po ngayon we're in the process of uh, institutionalization sa mga ibang units uh, mm. cell service hindi pa so okay. for now uh, for now uh, we're just preparing towards that end marami po silang bagong mga requirements and uh, they're I just recently lang po, na, na, ano lang po ako, nag, nag, naki-ibsdrop lang po ako doon sa uh, Institutionalization Evaluation Process or IEP ng NCRPO. Um, nakibalita lang po ako sa kanila. And yun nga, um, before five elements, meaning five lang po yung requirements. But now, um naging uh, before before po yung institutionalization sampo naging sampo siya and then na reduce po siya ang pinaka final po na ginagamit na template ngayon is anim so we are going to talk about that in a future meetings hindi po this this meeting kasi dinadaan-daan po natin ngayon yung process po ninyo mahirap po mabigla um ang rule po kasi diyan is baka mabilaukan so dandan po binibigay yung mga information and then uh, to give you, to give also ang ang ano ninyo uh, mabibigyan din po kayo ng time to adjust ang pinaka mahirap po kasi yung adjustment from uh, yung pong before yung ano yung system before and then ano nga yung system for sa ngayon so all of these things po are based on Ano po yung legal references natin? It's all based on there. Kasi ito rin po yung magiging basis for uh, institutionalization process. So ang hahanapin po nila, magbabalik at magbabalik po sila dun sa, sa kung ano yung nakasulat. So in this case, yung advisory council, uh, you have your basic memorandum circular ng PNP. Yun po yung basis natin, yung anim na key advisory council contribution. Yun po yung laman ngayon ng meeting natin, mamaya. Okay, sir. Thanks. Uh, excuse, uh, excuse me uh, lang po, sir. Uh, sir Salvation, meron lang po yung concern si CEO. Yes, po. APM po ako sa inyo. Sorry, ano po yun? Sino yun, sir?
Hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, ma'am, for a while lang po. Okay po. Mindamin tayo, ma'am, sir. Pwede pong mag-small talk. Elise, kamusta ba yung uh, Delta? Elise, Doc. Ay, si si Doc. <laughs> ah, wala ba? Wala. Saan ko, picture lang pala yan eh. <laughs> Ayan, naka-duty daw si Doc eh. Ay, mukhang uh, may pasyente pa. Nine na pala tayo. Marami. Ilan pa ba kulang? <laughs> Masira na naman. Gail, kaya lang kayo ng mister mo? Ah, ako pwede, pero siya hindi pa nakakalakad yun father eh. <laughs> ah, yeah. Good chair? Um, hindi pa kasi namin siya talaga nilalabas kasi... Hindi pa siya nakakaupo yung nang matagal na naupo. Yung pati sa sasakyan. Hindi pa kasi mabibend ng maayos yung mga knees niya. May certain okay. level lang po. So, mahirap po talaga yung transport. Kaya, Kanina pinag-630 uh, mas, pick family. Ay, thank you, Father. Thank you po. Ganun din yung ano, yung... Uh, Anak at saka mama ni, ano, ni Major kanina. Ano po ba yung mother in niya? Yung Nine recently? Oo. Uh, pero yung kanyang anak matagal na. Yeah. Tapos ang uh, si ate Nina. Ano ba pinagkakabalan mo dyan? Hi po, Father. <laughs> Good afternoon po. Ano din po, busy po kasi ang minamanage ko po na LGU is the Gig City and Patero. So kami po yung nagsusupervise ng vaccination sites, yung COVID response po, yung mga isolation facilities. So medyo stressful po talaga. Sa, sa Quezon City daw, 250 mga bata, no? Opo. Actually po, Father, ang pinakamataas ko na LGU na with Delta cases ngayon is Pasig eh. Ang taas po ng Pasig. Yeah. Mga, ano, mga bata ba o matatanda? Uh, hindi ko pa po alam yung age na data eh. I Magsisend po ako dito sa group chat, Father, pag meron na po. Tatawad kami kasi puro bata nga dito sa squatter area namin eh. Oh. Dito sa Kaluyang. Hindi naman, siguro naman po takot po silang maglabas-labas. Hindi po. Tapos nang labas nga eh kasi matatapang eh. Mukha nga oh, meron si natural immunity. <laughs> Sanay sa bacteria, <laughs> sa virus. <laughs> yeah. Nakakatakot po eh pag mga bata. Ano nga? Sa states, ganun din eh. Opo. Mga bata yung tinatamaan. Ano nga linya mo ate by profession? By education? Nurse po. Nurse po ako, father. Nurse din. Opo. <laughs> Ilang years ng nurse? Um, Ang years na? 12 years na po. Hmm? Tagal na pala. Baka kang grade 3 lang ha. I know. 11 years na po ako sa DOH eh. Ah, talaga? 
Paper. Persa <laughs> talaga. Nag-abroad ka rin ba, ate? Um, Doon po ako nag-high school, tapos dito po ako nag-college, father. Gail, sa amin, apat na pari namin na matay na. Grabe, nakita ko nga po yung ano eh, yung sa GC. Grabe. Ano po yun? Ba- ano pong dahilan? COVID. Ah, COVID yun? Seminaryo pa, professors namin yun, mga matatanin yun, pinag-aral. Saan po sila naka-assign dyan po? Paranyake. Paranyake oh. seminaryo. Oh my In God. In 12 days. 12 days, apa. Grabe, Gra- Hindi po sila vaccinated, Father? Yung uh, iba vaccinated, pero yung isa, conscious sa uh, decision niya, ayaw magpavaccine na yun at yung bata lang. Father, Father yeah. may malungkot dyan. Uh, ginamit ng anti-vaxxer, na, na, nakita niya yan, umikot sa atin, sa fiber ng alumni, nakatingis. Oh. Inano nila, pinotoshop nila yung pictures ng tatlo natin pare. Pagkatapos oh. ginamit na campaign ng mga anti-vaxxer na sinasabi na despite the fact that being vaccinated, they died of COVID. Pero tinanong ko yun kasi lahat yun sa Makatimid na matay halos eh. Uh, oh. I think two or three of them were died of COVID pero yung nauna... died of the DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis and complication. Yung COVID niya na una, tapos two of them did not get any vaccine. So mali yung mm-hmm. ano, mali yung umiikot na picture, ginamit pa din nakakainis for selfish okay. reason, for vested interest. Grabe. Umiikot 'yon, Father. Kaya Tinanong ko kung ano talagang kung sino vaccinated at hindi. So apparently, dalawa confirmed na hindi vaccinated. Tapos yung isa, uh, hindi exactly COVID. It's more of the complications of diabetes. Pero nagka-COVID siya last year. Last year or early this year. Tapos tumagal lang sa ospital. Kaya nakakainis yung father. Ginamit yung pictures nila without... permission at lahat. Oh, yeah. Ayun ako. Kaya malaki yung problema sa disinformation saka misinformation depende sa ano eh. So, sa yeah. interest nung naglalabas nung ano eh. Nung information. Ma'am Gail, thank you. Ay, Ma'am Gail. Si Ma'am, ano, Ma'am Nina, thank you for the ano ha. Thank you for the 
update noon galing yun sa ano namin eh sa mga classmates ko thank you opo thank you po doc oh nagka-campaign ako talaga for vaccination in fairness dito sa 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 Pasay alam nyo nap napaka-active ng barangay nag-house to house campaign na talaga <laughs> para yung vaccination pero Father, 200 meters away from our house, yung ground zero ng, ng variant. Doon sa likod ng Pasay City General Hospital, nandun yung lockdown. <laughs> Sila so, lahat doon, puro, puro variant. Dito sa Don Bosco, Mandaluyo, kapitbahay namin, dito sa Gate 3 lang, subdivision, 13 sila, buong uh, subdivision, uh, buong uh, compound. Ang Pinaman. ano, Father, the good news on top of the prevailing bad news. Oh, so dito, punong-punong ICU. Totoo yan, Father. 9 out of 10 uh, na nasa ICU are not vaccinated. Pagkatapos, those who are vaccinated with the breakthrough infections are just having mild to moderate. So, yun ang good news sa vaccine. Talagang ano, Father, ang, masa, ang malungkot lang, it also proves that the vaccine works. Maraming batang may sakit. Kasi sila yung hindi priority na may ano eh, ng vaccination eh, as of now. So it tells you also that vaccinate the vaccines really do work. Oh, yeah, yun, Father. Yun yung mga bagong lumalabas na, ano, na information sa data. So, yan. Pero, Father, ano, dasal pa rin tayo. Ang dami. Ang dami talaga. I'm hoping na it's not as bad as what we had last March, but it's it's bad. <laughs> bad pa rin. Punong-puno ang hospital. Grabe, no? So, yeah. Ang ano nga, Father, uh, the other day, na simula na naman yung pila ng ambulansya, saka Oh. Yung turning away, sabi nga, nakita ko na naman, nakikipagtalo na naman, nakikipag-away para ipasok sa loob ng... Anong uh, uh, ano dun eh? Oh, no, uh, depression. Ng ER. Sabi nga nila sa akin, last March daw, Father, may naglulupasay, saka lumuluhod oh. sa harap oh. ng ER para lang papasukin sila. Eh, Father, wala na talagang paglalagyan. Wala na. Walang kama sa, doon sa unit. Ubus na. Ang hospital yan. Father, dito. Sa paligid. <laughs> Talaga? Wow. Yung mga wow. malalaking hospital lang nauna, Father. Malalaki pa naman yan. Kaya, ano, kaya kailangan talaga. Sa ano, Father? Sa sa bahay, met mo yung daan ng ambulansya. Hmm. Kasi nagta-transfer out ng Pasay City dyan ng hospital. Hmm. Ang problema, tumahimik lang kami kasi nagsara PGH. Ay, pambira, PGH mismo. Oo, oh, Father. Nag-announce nag, si Gap eh. Nag-announce si Gap na magsi, magsisismo na sila kasi sobra ng dami ng tao sa kanang part saka nag-aabang ng ambulansya doon sa labas ng ER nila. Sa kumpang. Kaya tumahimik. Pero ngayon, mukhang bukas na uli kasi pala yung ambulansya dumadaan sa amin eh. Nag-transfer out. Dalawang squad tent yung nasa labas ng Pasay City Jade, Father, eh. Doon sa tabi sa Taklara, tsaka sa St. Mary's, may nakatay yung squad tent doon. Oh well, Father, andito lang Buras ako. Gail, nagkikinig lang ako, ha? Kasi Sige. multitasking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nag-duty ka ba ngayon? Uh, uh, parang ganun, Father. Uh, schedule, tsaka sari-saring consultation, Father. Uh, ayun, yung kinuwento ko sa inyo consultation, buhay, yun na naman Father, ang dami na naman oh. Kaya dito lang ako Father, kikinig Sige Ingat po, uh, Doc Ellis So, Mr. Chair, uh, nandito na rin po si Attorney Flores, I think Wow, welcome <clears throat> Attorney Flores, sir, good afternoon Good afternoon po um, we also we have with us also in attendance yung pong ating uh, chief, si Police Colonel Maria Ninita Senador uh, De Leon. Sir, ma'am, magandang hapon po. 
Yes, good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. Likewise. So, Mr. Chair, um, I would like to inform you, sir, that we have a quorum. Five out of seven po ng ating advisory council is already here. Our chief is already here. So, sir, um, may we ask for your uh, permission to start the meeting? Sino ba yung chair? <laughs> go, go. Tingin ko sa, tingin ko, father, ikaw yun. <laughs> go, go. Ang, uh, sige, start na, start na. Ang, uh, ano, ang uh, sasuggest namin na ang uh, moderate parliamentary procedure o, o simple lang na parang uh, sharing. I see, ano, yung ating uh, communication experts, yung Chris Bailey, ano. Um, pero nga present may meron kang presentation at uh, for discussion ano yun ang yes sir uh, so that meron lang po tayong susundin pattern na po ito dun sa mga previous ko pong experience and it does it mean po sir na ito na yung pattern it's just that uh, it will just give you a brief uh, a brief overview of ano po yung ginagawa before and ano po yung ginagawa ng advisory council sa ibang lugar so that kayo po, sir, uh, will be able to have your own um, parliamentary procedure then. Sige. So, sir, good morning. Ma'am, good morning. We'll start now the meeting. Sir Ace, nakamute po kayo. Ah, sorry po, ma'am. Ulitin, ulitin ko po ulit. <laughs> <laughs> Nag-aantay. Walang sounds. Nagsasalita ako pero walang nothing is coming out. So ulitin ko po ulit, sir, ma'am. Um, so in my capacity po as the chief PSABU and uh, my role as the secretariat of uh, the advisory council meetings, uh, uh, the chairman has given the permission to start the meeting. So, sir, ma'am, good afternoon po. We'll now start the meeting. This is the second uh, regional advisory council meeting, calendar year 2021, date August 18, 2021. So, sir, the scope of our activity for today will start with the welcome remarks. Oops, sorry. It's welcome remarks by our vice chairperson, Ms. Gail, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, fellow RAC members, uh, Sir Ace. Um, sorry, I didn't remember my names. Uh, attorney, uh, we also have here Doc Ellis, um, Minia, and of course, our. Um, I'd like to get the full name of Ma'am, ang ating. Hold on, let me check. Ayan, si Police Colonel Ma'am De Leon, good afternoon as well. Um, si Sir Hanson, good afternoon also. Welcome to our uh, second RAC meeting as well as the induction. It is an honor for me to welcome all of you. And um, based on our last month's meeting, this will be our second meeting. And then as promised, it will also be the induction. And really, it's an honor. You know, the, the one month journey that I've been with this organization is really tough but challenging as well because you know my heart goes deeper with the organization and I really want to help it's just that for now I don't know how so that's why I've been in touch with father as well to guide me and sir ace so I hope with the whole team here you know with all our expertise we'll be able to work as one and be able to um, you know come up with a good projects following of course with a uh, KPIs and the care ACE that Sir ACE shared with us, and we will be able to reach the goal, you know, uh, being our ACs here. And we hope that everyone will also share their experiences and knowledge as well, so that we'll be able to work, you know, um, smoothly 
uh, with you know with each other and i hope that you know sir ace team will always be there to guide us and you know support us along the way because all of us are very new but again we're all here to help and we're very willing to support the organization uh, with god's help as well and of course with our chairman here father pablo who's always there to support us and to guide us as well with the divine intervention I truly believe that we'll be able to achieve our um, mission and vision um, of this um, council. So again, welcome to our meeting and um, have a pleasant morning, each and everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Maraming salamat po, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, i-recognize din po natin si Dr. Go. He's already here. Oh, okay. Dr. Go, welcome as well. Sir Louis is also here, our newest um, member as well. So you have mentioned already a while ago that uh, six, Cuba, six plus one is already a quorum. Um, 50% plus one. percent Oh, okay. Yeah. And I think konti na lang ako lang, ano, para makomplete na tayo. Sayang, I hope that everyone will be here so that the induction will be talagang, ano, complete sa, sa picture taking. <laughs> okay, ma'am, sir. Uh... We now move on to the, the second part of our uh, activity for today, which is the official signing of terms of reference and oath taking of RAC members. Um, tanong ko lang po, sino pa po yung hindi nakareceive ng terms of reference and then the oath taking, oath taking po natin? Meron po bang uh, member po Sir, dito? Sir Is, ako yes, po wala po akong nareceive. Saka daw po si attorney. Ah, oh, okay. Sige, ma'am. Well, we'll just have, um, i-flash ko na lang po dito yung out of office. So anyway, ceremonial naman po ito. Uh, po because po our... Chat, ano, uh, sir, sir A, Sir A, ako din hindi nakareceive ng terms of reference. Sorry, Actually, it's here po. Nasa chat po siya. Sorry. <laughs> na Sinend po ni Sir A dito sa chat natin. Actually, dito ko lang din siya din-download. Sorry, ma'am. If you open uh, your Actually, chat it's, it's my fault, ma'am. At... Uh, uh, na overlook ko po yung mga mga ano yung mga little details and I'm, I'm very sorry po sa advisory council and to the chief po anyway ma'am sir um let me just uh, take the cue of our uh, chief uh, ma'am de leon ma'am um if you already have the copy of the oath taking ma'am we can now start with the official oath taking po ng ating rock members Yes, good afternoon po. Good afternoon. Uh, I understand everybody has a copy of the oath of office appointment as RMDO advisory council members. Yes. Uh, yes po. Thumbs up sa lahat para lang pare-parehas tayo. Okay, thank you very much. I would have to request everyone to please um, probably stand and uh, raise their right hands po para lang ma makita din sa picture. Pwede bang mag-stand o pwedeng sit down na lang? Or stand po kasi oath taking. Pasensya na. Uh, lalag sorry po, yung camera ko kasi is level lang. <laughs> ah, sorry. O oh, sige. Mag-stand po, um, lalagpas oh, yung ulo. Yung, ano, we, we sit na lang and uh, I will have to ask you to please raise your right hand. Pa Paki-unmute na lang sila lahat. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Kindly... Uh, repeat after me. I state your name. I, I Mary V. Makira. Having been elected, appointed to the position of. Having, having been, been elected, elected, appointed to the position, position of, of Mr. member of the RMDU Advisory Council. Of the, the RMDU Advisory, Advisory Council. I do hereby solemnly swear. I do hereby hereby that I will consensuously and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability that I will consensuously and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability the duties and responsibilities of my present position. The duties and responsibilities of my present position. Of my present position. That I have read and clearly understood and I will abide by that I have read and clearly understood, and I will abide by 
the guidelines governing the RMDU Advisory Council. The guidelines governing the RMDU Advisory Council. That I will obey and enforce the laws. That I will, that I will obey and enforce the laws. Rules and regulations and policies of the Advisory Council. Rules and, and regulations and policies of the Advisory, advisory Council. Council. And those stipulated in the terms of reference. And those, and those stipulated in the terms of reference. of reference. That I actively participate. That I, that I actively participate. And support all Advisory Council activities and programs. And support, and support all, all advisory, advisory Council activities and programs, and programs. including those that shall here and after be adopted, including those that, that shall, shall here and after, after be, adopted, be adopted, that shall benefit the Advisory Council in general and RMDU in particular. That shall so benefit, benefit the Advisory, advisory Council, Council in general and RMDU in particular. particular. And that finally, I shall impose this obligation upon myself. And then, and then finally, finally, I shall, I shall impose, impose this obligation, obligation upon, upon, myself. Myself. upon myself. Voluntarily and without mental preservation or purpose of evasion. Voluntarily, Voluntarily and without, without mental preservation or purpose, or purpose of, of evasion. Of preservation purpose to help me God. To help me God. God. To help me God. Kindly sign your name. Sign. Okay, so virtually you have signed your name and I have uh, signed also. Welcome as advisory council members of the Regional Medical Dental Unit and CRP officers and moms. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations, everyone. The impasse all in vows now, and we are really juicy. Thank you, sir, ma'am. Um, a special thanks to our um, uh, chief of the RMDU, Police Colonel De Leon, ma'am. I know she's very, very busy. Uh, for, kasi ma'am, um, uh, sir, ma'am, ang chief po natin is uh, very, um, lagi tinatawag po yan. So sa mga meetings po sa health, both health service and NCRP. Ma'am, maraming salamat po for sparing your time with us. Sir Ace. Sorry po. Sir Ace, hahabol daw po si Councillor Pami Zamora. Is it okay? Um, to our chairman, sir. Uh, hahabol daw po si ma'am. Uh, of course. Uh, That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Thank Sige you po. po. Thank you po. Ma'am, sir. So let me just again uh, go back to my presentation. So we now have our official um, oath taking uh, with our RAC members. Ma'am, ma sir, congratulations. Paul. Let me now present uh, to the group my presentation. So, sir, ma'am, uh, this will be just, I, I'll try to finish this one within 30 minutes. Pa. What we have done so far. So first, what we have done is organize. Uh, just like anything else po in military and police, we must first try to organize everything. And then uh, we now try to communicate to our uh, personnel and uh, other people involved as the stakeholders, ano po yung intention natin at ano po yung napag-usapan so that uh, we have unity in command. Next po is to establish the policies and guidelines. Uh, so far, po, sir, ma'am, uh, we have already we have an approved seven technical working group resolutions. Uh, for info, ma'am, our target is only 12 per year. So we're halfway there. So anim na lang po. Uh, actually, less than anim. Five pala. Five na lang po. Uh, bingo na tayo. So first, we talk about the reestablishment of the technical working group, the Regional Advisory Council. Kayo po yun and the PSMU. And then we also re-establish the PGS schedule of activities under resolution number 2021-001. So we had our first operations review last July 6, our first technical working group last July 6. Um, we also have our first RAC meeting July 14 as our initial 
uh, activities that has been conducted. So as a reminder, and again po, paulit-ulit po, pasensya na po kung paulit-ulit ko po sasabihin ito. Every time po kayo may rock meeting, ito po yung aking presentation. Template na po ito. Um, there are three strategy partners when it comes to the RMDU. Um, there is what we call the technical working group, which is the policy making body of the strategy. The regional advisory council, which are kayo po yun, ang uh, masasabi ko po dyan, kayo po ang aming consultants. And last but not least po, the police strategy management unit, which is the primary mover and implementer of the PGS in RMDU. So on the center po ng ating uh, tripartite agreement and uh, partners, we have our RMDU, NCRPO, Charter Statement, and Scorecard. So yan po yung ating magiging communication tool that will be the same for all strategy partners. So how do we now reflect that towards ano po yung ginagawa po ng RMDU? So the strategy partners is top, uh, part of the top management. Kasama po natin ang chief ng RMDU to be able to manage po yung buong ating NCRPO uh, Regional Medical and Dental Unit. This involves po yung personnel, uh, which is our main customer, no? yung NCR personnel, dependents, and authorized civilians. Um, we have also the core process owners. Yung, ito po yung mga tao ng RMDU personnel which directly serve and has direct contact with our customers. So in this case, yung NCRPO. And of course, our support process owners, sila naman po yung po ating um, backliner. Kung may frontliner, ito po yung backliner natin. So as shown po is the Health Service Technical Working Group. This is our technical working group po sa RMDU. This is the PSMU of the Health Service. This is the uh, PSMU naman po ng uh, RMDU. And these are the reassignment and replacements uh, mula po nag-umpisa tayo hanggang today. So, uh, inform ko lang po kayo, uh, people have gone and gone. Uh, so, napalitan naman po sila in their place. Health Service has also uh, their own advisory council uh, headed by their chairman, Brigadier General Marlene R. Padua. And of course, in the RMDU Regional Advisory Council, our chairperson is Father Salvador Pablo. So as a summary of the RAP membership, we have one in the business, one in academe, one, actually ma'am, sir, meron na po tayo ngayon in the person of Councillor Pami Zamora, which will be representing the local government unit. Um, yan po yung actionable item natin last week when I presented to you the summary of RAP membership. So... The gang now is complete. Uh, the senior citizen, religious, and the youth sector, pinag-isa lang po natin yan with one, uh, sa, isang, sa isang katauhan po ni Father Pablo, which is our chairman. So in the future po, if we wanted to have um, specific po para dito, like let's say yung senior citizen, if you, wa if you want someone po to represent this specifically para marilib po yung role ni Father doon, we can do so. Um, we, uh, we also have one in youth. So we can still uh, make that effort if you want. And we also have one from women. Actually, dalawa na. Um, national government agencies and the non-government organizations or other interest groups. So we now have Mr. Jose Luis Domingo as uh, one of our... Um, new members. So, that's, uh, ito po, Sir Ma'am, uh, isa po sa atin na si Councillor Pami Zamora. Ma'am, uh, nandito na po ba si Ma'am? Yes, yeah, she's here na po. Hi Ma'am. Yes, good, uh, good afternoon po. Good afternoon uh, po. Yes Ma'am. So Ma'am, uh, welcome po. Uh, uh, right now po, you are in the process po yung pong ipopropose po natin ngayon sa Regional Advisory Council. Uh, the inclusion of Councillor Pami Zamora. I now turn over po sa ating chairman and vice chairman and the members. Uh, ano po ang inyong um, masasabi regarding the inclusion of Councillor Pami Zamora sa inyong members as a member of the RAC? 
Welcome oh. po, Counselor Pami. Yeah. Welcome, Approved. Counselor. So, wala nang masyadong maaba-usapan. Yes. <laughs> so, welcome, ma. <laughs> welcome We're so po, lucky ma. to have you, uh, of course, the counselor. It's really an honor, syempre, representing the LGU. Thank you, ma. po. Thank you. It's also ma. an honor for me um, to be part of this, po, of course. Ma'am, any short message po, Ma'am Pami, uh, to our uh, Regional Advisory Council and our chief? Um... Uh, una po sa inyong lahat, um, a blessed day. Um, pasensya na po, medyo nahuli po ako kasi actually po sa lungsod ng Tagig, ako po yung chairperson din po ng health. So uh, lately, kahit po nandito po ako sa bahay, uh, dahil po kinakabahan po ako sa Delta variant, ay uh, talagang hindi po natatapos ang Zoom meetings. Um, Lately po sa Tagig talagang binabantayan na po namin kung nasaan ang bawat kaso. Hindi po kagaya dati na alam namin sa isang barangay meron pong walo. Ngayon po kada umaga hinahanap na po namin ang walong kaso na yan. Nasa quarantine facility ba sila? Sa bahay? Nakatakas ba sila? Gusto ba nilang tumakas? Um, kailangan pong ganyan na talaga katindi yung um, pag-monitor sa uh, aming mga kababayan kasi... Uh, hindi po biro itong Delta variant. So, um, kaya po ako nahuli. Pagpasensyahan niyo po ako. Kung mamarapatin niyo po sa susunod, una, po, una pa po ako sa inyong lahat. Promise. Ako na po ang admin. Nagvo-volunteer na po ako. Um, to all of you, um, it's an honor um, na mapasama sa isang prestigyosong samahan. Um, I hope po na yung mga natutunan ko sa lungsod tagig bilang chairperson ng health and um, six years din po akong chairperson ng uh, social welfare and development ay mag, uh, kumbaga maging useful po sa ating samahan. I hope my presence here will not only uh, be of use no, sa mga formalidad pero I am also here um, Uh, as a friend and as a partner to all of you. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, we now have another uh, uh, our proposed po na RAC member po, si Mr. Jose Luis Domingo. Uh, I think he's here. Sir Louis. Um, so anyway, sir, ma'am, to our RAC members, uh, to the chairman, let me just ask, sir, kung okay po ba sa inyo, sir, si Sir Louis? <laughs> so, eh, ganun na ganun. Yes. Proof. So anyway, ma'am, sir, let me just ask uh, si Sir Louis. Sir, pasensya na. Mukhang nasa gitna ka po ng, uh, ano ba to, uh, training? Uh, sir, parang nakamute ka ata. Nakamute. Nakamute. Naka yan, yan. Yan, yan, sir. Sir, any short message lang po sa ating chief and uh, rock members? Ah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm glad to have been honorably invited. Parang siguro sa iba, they would love it. You know, uh, parang better term provide ako just to be in there here I was uh, gladly and humbly invited thank you so much for putting your trust in me uh, happy familiar faces uh, Gail Father Pablo Dr. Elise and of course uh, Ray thank you so much for having me uh, great afternoon everyone. thank you sir Sir, ma'am, uh, so that uh, that concludes po yung ating dalawang bagong member po ng uh, RAC. Uh, RAC. Welcome. Welcome here, Sir Louis. Welcome po, Sir Louis. So, ma'am, sir, let me just continue po uh, my presentation. So, there are different levels po of types of performance review. So, as shown po in your screen, um, what is required po ng ating uh, CPSM and then po yung ating hierarchy is the strategy review which is conducted quarterly po ito so that is four times a year um, during our quarterly reviews 
kinoconsider po yung pong tatlong or yung three monthly operations review, the technical working group meetings, and then yung output po ng RAC meetings natin. So dyan po yung pag-uusapan because this is a high level uh, meeting. This is once every quarter. Kasama po dito yung ating chief as the uh, main proponent or the chairman of, the meet, of this meeting. And then uh, ini-invite po natin yung HSPSMU and if the HSPSMU wants to also invite someone from CPSM, uh, they can do so. Pero invited lang po sila. Uh, in this meeting also, nandyan din po yung ating um, uh, strategy partners, which is the technical working group, the RAC PSMUs, and the chief of units under the district level. So pwede rin po tayo mag-invite from R1 since uh, functional grouping po ang health service or RMDU in this case ng ating admin section. So these are this can be they can be invited to share their opinion and maybe listen to what we have accomplished. <clears throat> so every yun pong another requirement is the operational uh, operations review which is done uh, monthly this is uh, uh, 12 times a year uh, which is usually presided or chaired by the chief PSMU. And then ang attendees po dito yung po ating mga PSMU personnel uh, and other sections. And then the tactical uh, review, ito po, sir, ma'am, hindi po ito required. Hindi po ito hinahanap ng CPSM. But this is something that we propose that we do because um, pag mapapansin po ninyo, one of the things na mahirap pong gawin is pagsamasamahin po yung ating mga tao. So um, it is a best practice po na we do regular meetings na maliliit, maiikli po. Short meetings lang po ito and it doesn't involve everyone. Ang kasama lang po dito is yung pong concern. So yun po yung laman ng tactical review. And usually it is done every week but not necessarily each week po kailangan gawin. Kasi minsan may mga ligaw po na utos or may mga biglaan po tayong emergencies. So ang nangyayari po, short meetings, maliit lang po na involved na tao kung sino lang po yung concern, kung sino lang po yung dapat magtrabaho, yun lang po yung kasama. Anyway, ma'am, sir, um, next po is Technical Working Group, which is chaired by our chairperson of the Technical Working Group, uh, Police Lieutenant Colonel Aquino, which is the deputy of the RMDU. And last but not the least po, yung po ating Regional Advisory Council meeting, which is uh, chaired by our chairperson. So ito na po yun. <clears throat> so as a performance review or monitoring of what is happening on a, the quality management system activities of the PGS or PMP Patrol Plan 2030, ito po yung binibilang po natin. So the advisory council, ang required po sa kanya is anim per year. So dahil po nagsimula lang po tayo noong July, ang ginawa na po natin is every month. But next year, when <clears throat> we go back to normal, uh, what will happen po is that uh, you can have your regular meeting uh, every two months. So hindi po ganun kabigat. And right now po, we have an actual of two, including this one. So there is now negative four variants na lang po. So mahabol po natin ito by December, hopefully. The technical working group naman po, ito po ay monthly. So yan po yung required in CPSM. And right now, nakakaisa na po tayo. And by next week, magkakandak naman po tayo ng technical working group, yung output po ng OR, ang output po ng uh, Regional Advisory Council will reduce it into a resolution and the resolution will now be presented to our technical working group for their discussion and debate. And then if they are all in agreement, it will now be uh, forwarded to our chief for his uh, approval and disapproval. Depende na lang po kung ano po yung pagiging decision ng ating chief. <coughs> Sorry. Now, next po is the operations management review, which is dos dose po ito every year. Right now po, nakakadalawa na po tayo dito. And each three po na operations review, ang output po nito and collation of data will now be presented during our strategy review, which is in this case po, meron po tayong strategy review every quarter. So, um... Ang output po or results of activities of the PSMU uh, in the cascading and activities resolution, 
Um, so far po, nung mga tactical reviews natin, uh, naninibago pa po yung mga tao natin. So, 70% po ng tactical reviews was not attended, but we understand. Wala naman po problema doon. Basta po, uh, we keep on improving every, each time. Posting of the first video tutorial po, based on the rough meeting before, uh, we will now come up with a revised video tutorial. Para saan po ito? Simple lang po, kasi we do not have the luxury of time turuan po lahat ng 600 personnel ng RMDU kung ano po yung balak natin. So uh, what we are going to do is to be able to reduce it into a video tutorials kung saan po isi-send lang po natin ito sa mga kasama natin sa frontline and the backline po ng RMDU. And from there, they are going to learn kung ano na po yung ginagawa natin and ano po yung intention ng RMDU. And then next po, we have an approved four te technical working group resolution. Meron po kami ngayon nakahanda na apat na technical working group for your approval and uh, consideration. So as I mentioned, meron po tayong 12 per year na target. So makaka-11 na po tayo kung ma-approvean po yung apat. So that means we will be having our, um, mamimit po natin yung target natin by next month if uh, all goes well. So as a result po ng operations review, I would like to report to everyone na uh, doon sa first OR po natin last July 21, uh, 2021, yung PSMU po was oriented on the basics of PGS just like po kayo noon. Uh, however, 60% lang po ng PSMU naka-attend at that time uh, since nag-BBC po tayo. Subsequently naman po, nagkaroon naman po tayo ng tactical reviews, doon po natin yan re -re on the second OR po, PSMU personnel was introduced to the concept of scorecard na ito na po yung tool for monitoring progress and then the OR and SR metrics. Uh, except one lang po ang, naka ang naging absent po dito. As a recommendation for improvement po sa OR natin, on the third OR, the PSM, PSMU should be in full attendance. We should like to remind them that one hour lang naman po ito every month. So that's 10 minutes per perspectives, 40 minutes in total, plus 20 minutes po na discussion. That's not a lot for one whole, one whole month. Next, the OR shall focus on the scorecard and OR matrix that shall be presented on the first strategy review on September para po pag present po namin ito kay CEO, kay Chief, hindi po siya yung doon pa lang niya pa sasabihin, oh, ba't niyo ginawa to? Bakit ito hindi niyo ginawa? Supposed to be the operations review should be the one doing it. And then by the time po na dadating kay CEO, nagawa na po yung staff work and then approve and disapprove na lang po yung, yung tasking ni CEO dito. And then of course, magdadaan din po itong mga results na ito sa advisory council as well as the technical working group. Next po is the tactical reviews. Uh, the, it is the key success factor po talaga sa OR. If we are going to spend one, week, one hour per week per perspective, and one hour per tactical review, that means it is four hours per perspective multiplied by four, and that means we had 16 hours preparation time, yun lang, it is ala, naka ano po siya atado ng, ng whole week. Meaning, we have time. Yun nga lang po, kailangan lang po deliberate practice kasi ah, ah, lalagi-lagiin lang po namin ito. So, sir, ma'am, this is one of the proposed resolutions po, number 2021-010 the stakeholder analysis because it is very important for us to be able to know our stakeholders, especially our customers, so that we will now have um, uh, targeted na po yung ating, ating strategy. So just a brief lang po, customer is different from stakeholders. Uh, customers are the persons or entities that directly receives the purchase of the product. Short and sweet, sir, sila po ang either end user or say yung binibentahan nung, nung, nung servisyo natin. In this case, the RMDU is uh, providing the healthcare services for the PNP. So in this case, our customer is the NCR PO personnel. Stakeholders are the person, group, organization that are either internally or externally affected. Meaning affected po neto is either they are negatively affected or positively affected. In short po, sir, they don't have to be the end user or hindi man sila yung nakikinabang doon sa services natin, but if they have influence over it or nai-influence yan sila sa services natin, then they are called stakeholders. So as shown, ma'am, sir, 
Uh, I know it's a little bit daunting and dami daming words, but uh, what is important here is that our customer, sabi nga, customer is king. So in this case po, we should have a customer-centric strategy. So our customer should be at the center of our charter statement and the scorecard as the basis of prioritizing projects. Kasi one of the pitfalls po ng strategy natin or ng strategy ng iba is that ang dami-daming gustong gawin pero at the end of the day is the customer benefiting. Yun lang po yung ibig sabihin na itong illustration na ito. As shown po sir, there are 600 plus RMDU personnel which is composed of organic meaning po health service po sila. They belong to the unit of health service Detailed meaning they come from different units like NCRP or personal po sila pero naka-detail po sa amin meaning sa amin po naka-assign, sa amin po nagtatrabaho. On the other hand, we have the SHUs which is what we call station health units. Kakaiba po sila because they are not really assigned with us. We are just giving, uh, we, are, we only have administrative, um, admin, uh, administrative control po sa kanila. Operationally, they still belong doon po sa NCRPO units. Now sir, as you can see, we all we have 23,000 plus na NCR personnel all over Metro Manila. So sa lahat po ng ating cities na nandito po sa Maynila, there are 23,000 po na pasyente or potential customers. Hindi naman po sila lahat nangangailangan ng healthcare services, pero they are potentially our customers. Um, ang nilagay ko lang po dito, RSUs or meaning regional support units are not yet included in the number. Pero I'm not sure kung tama po yung pagkakaintindi ko doon. Pero so far, so far po, yun po yung, yung, yung data natin. <clears throat> so as shown, sir, ma'am, is the regional health service, uh, sorry, uh, regional medical dental unit. Kasi pinalitan na po yung pangalan natin. Dati pong Regional Health Service, ngayon, Regional Medical Dental Unit, MDU, um, organizational structure. It is headed by our chief, chief RMDU, assist, uh, may assistant po siya. We have your administration, operation, budgets, and finance. We also have the dental, medical, and um, nursing sections. We also have uh, five districts. No? Meron po tayo sa mga district level natin. The Northern, Manila, Quezon City, uh, Eastern and the Southern Police Districts. And as, as mentioned before, meron din po tayong station health unit. So bawat station po ng police, meron po diyang station health unit. Dapat. So now, let me just bring you to the Advisory Council Key Contribution. It is uh, referred to from the memo from the TDCO way back in 2016 entitled Advisory Council Key Contributions to the PNP for 2016. There are six advisory council key contribution. So as shown po in the list, strategic, advocacy, skills, moral and welfare, capability enhancement, and other contributions. So in the AKC1, yung strategic and uh, operational information, ito na po yun. When you attend these meetings uh, and then you give your recommendations and suggestions, dyan po papasok yung inyong role as strategists. Now, question, sir, ma'am, how do we monetize this? Kasi kailangan po para mabilang po natin ito. And by the way, sir, ma'am, hinihingi po ito ng CPSM. Sinasubmit po ito every year. And minsan, nire-require nila ito monthly. Paano po natin mabibilang to? So what we have done before is this. So what, uh, what is very significant po dito is that kailangan po meron kayong sabi na natin, uh, consultancy rate. Kasi mga consultant po kayo. No? So what I did was, I researched po yung United Nations and effective January 2010. Although hindi, po, hindi ko pa po ito na-update. Um, I think si Sir Go, Sir, uh, baka may bago po kayong monthly rate ng isang uh, consultant sa United Nations. Baka may alam po kayo. Basta ito lang po ang alam ko. Pag level A po, ang monthly rate lang, ang monthly rate po niya is $5,200. And then daily rate of $260 to $340. And then sa C po, yung po yung $114 and then $570. So what I did was at 45 pesos per dollar, $260 is equivalent to $11,700 per day. Divided it with 8 hours per day, the rate will be 
1,462.5 per hour. Eh, mahirap po mag-calculate, sir, ma'am. And since bababa naman po yung kinuha ko at 260, pasensya na po kayo kung pinipid ko kayo sa calculation. Pero ni-round off ko na lang po ng 1,500 per hour. For every hour that you are spending during uh, your, your consultant, you are now spending or you are now sharing with RFDU, although hindi naman na, namin, di, di naman namin kayo binabayaran talaga, uh, pag ginawa po natin ito is you now have 1,500 per hour for consistency and ease of calculation. So let's say, for example, po, we have 10 minimum RAC members. Um, that's 1,500 per hour per member. So an average of one hour per RAC meeting, that's times 10. So that's 11,500 per meeting. Each year po, sir, sabi natin, may anim po na RAC meetings. So that is a projected, no? yung projection po natin na advisory key contribution po, basta lang po mag-attend lang kayo ng meeting, meron na po tayong output na 69,000 uh, 69, po na consultancy rate every year. So multiply po natin sa tatlo, since ang inyo pong terms of reference is from 2021 to 2023, that's 69 times 3, that's 207 three-year projection. And note, sampu lang po kayong RAC member dito, uh, pwede po mag-maximum po tayo ng 15. <clears throat> Next po, AKC2, Advocacy and Support of the Organizational Strategy. So these are things like promotion, endorsement of the RMDU and CRPO, uh, especially in media institutions, participation in police community relations. Meron din po dito yung implementation of police community relations like Balik Eskwela, Barangay Ngihan, Kaligkasan, and Gender Equality. So these are the proposed advocacy initiatives. Sir, ma'am, disclaimer lang po, hindi po ito yung dapat ninyong gawin. This is just uh, my take since wala naman po tayong reference po kung anong pwedeng gawin ng advisory council. These are just um, um, proposed. So it's up to you po, sir, ma'am, if you want it or not, it's okay po. No, no harm done po. So let's say, for example, po, no, ang initiative po ng advisory council in reference to advisory council Key contribution number two is usapang pulis, pangkalusugan at kaligkasan radio show. Uh, pwede pong gawin po ni Ma'am Gail at ni, um, ni, ni Sir Louie. Okay. No? So, so, since nandun naman po sila, or with the participation of all the advisory council, we conduct one per week, a show of one per week. That means uh, times four weeks, times four months from September to December. That is 16 radio shows. Let's just say po, sir, ma'am, that per show, kung wala po tayong show at kailangan magbayad ni RMDU ng show, magbabayad po kami ng 5,000. So 5,000 times 16 shows, that's a total of 80,000. So that is now the advisory key contribution of the, advice of the RAC. Um, Nag-contribute na po kayo for just doing a one-hour show per week. So let's say po we go further. Ang target po natin is 2022. So tataasan lang po natin from January to December, one per week pa rin, that's 52 weeks. So that's a total of 260,000 na rin. On the target of 2023, sir, ma'am, so let's just say dinagdagan na po natin, in-increase natin ng two per week show, that means 104 shows, that means 520,000 na po siya. Next po is participation in PNP activities. Let's say may nag-retire po. Nag-retire po yung isang general. Or let's say, for example, meron pong uh, advisory council uh, get-together ng buong CPSM, ng buong Pilipinas. Nag-attend po kayo doon. Or let's say, for example, you just attended in a command activity. So what will happen is, ang calculation natin is, let's just say lang po, one per month lang po yung inattendan ninyo, and that means four months po yun, there are four PNP activities that is attended by only one, kahit isa lang po sa inyo, ang umaten dito, hindi po lahat, kahit isa lang. So the cost, again, babalikan po natin yung cost structure natin kanina as 1,500 consultancy rate, so meaning times two hours, di ba? madalas po, mahaba po yung mga ganito, that means 3,000 po times 4, that's 12,000 key contribution by the end of the year. So on and so forth na rin po. So kung pa, pa, pararamihin lang po naman natin ito, so 36,000 and 72,000 na po yung key contribution. 
So in this AKC2, what will happen is a total of 20 activities on the first year, 64 activities on the second year, and uh, 128 activities on the third year. That's a possible of sa third year natin is 592,000 plus 296,000 and 90, 92,000. That means ito na po yung three-year contribution po nilo, ninyo. <clears throat> So let's say in the AKC3 naman po, skills enhancement. enhancement. In my experience po, sir, ma'am, ito po yung pinakamalaki kadalasan na pwedeng gawin po ng isang advisory council. So dito po, marami po kasi tayo pwedeng gawin. At uh, ang katotohanan po nito, mahal. Mahal po ang training. So in the proposed training initiatives, again, sir, ma'am, no, I'm not saying ito po yung gawin ninyo. I, I, I'm just... Um, Proposing this one because uh, these are things that I think would be relevant po sa RMDU. So let, I took a look at three, only three, marami pa pong iba, napakarami po niyan. Uh, so let's say gender equality, napakalawak po niyan. Uh, let's just say um, strategy po, marami rin po yan. Marami rin po yung communication communication training, marami po yan. So napakarami po. But I only took a look at three things. Uh, number one po, yung PNP Law Enforcement Occupation Safety and Health Training Course. This is based po sa Occupational Safety and Health. In fact, ginagawa na po ito ng dole. And I have attended last three months ago nung basic neto. And I asked the, I asked the first question po po doon was this. Kung meron pong construction, occupational safety and health, how come ang, ang law enforcement wala? And I research po sa abroad, meron. Meron po sila specific lang po pang police. So ang question ko po, why not? Eh, di ba po, kakaiba po ang trabaho ng police. Meron po tayong safety and health concerns. Ano po ito specifically? So a target, let's say for, let's say for example po, Sir Ma'am, mag, magkaroon po tayo ng 10 per month na tao for training neto, uh, there is a projected AC contribution. Sorry ma'am, uh, binabaan ko ng konti, 5,000 lang, kunwari lang naman po ito. Per student, times 10 students, that's 50,000. Times 4 po, hanggang December, that means we have now an advisory council contribution of 200,000. Moving forward po sa 2022, 10 pa rin po, pero 12 months na siya, that's 600,000. Sa 2023, in increase po natin from 10 to 20 so times 12 that's 4 million and 800,000 next po is the PNP tactical law enforcement emergency medical response course pakahaba pero <laughs> ang point lang po dito is uh, unique po yung medical emergency when it comes to law enforcement marami po nagsasabi eh but di ba yung military sir iba rin po yung military in fact in, in abroad po, uh, in my experience po, marami rin po ako nakitang ibang iterations po neto. Military is still different po sa law enforcement because uh, iba rin po yung environment na ginagalawan natin dito. So in this case, let's just say po, nag-conduct po tayo 10 per month from September to December. That's a cost of 10,000 which by the way, napakababa po neto kasi yung last ko po nakita is around 25,000 pesos. Converted na po yung kasi dollar rate sila. So that's 400,000 uh, for the first year. Second year is 1.2 and then 9.6 na po pagdating ng dulo. And then po, yung last but not the least po dito is PNP Law Enforcement Biosafety and Biosecurity Course. Ace, bakit, bakit biosafety and biosecurity? E COVID tayo ngayon. Eh, sir, ma'am, eh, next year baka hindi na COVID-19, COVID-13 naman. O baka naman ibang strain. O baka naman hindi lang po yun. Like before, kahit kung let's say, for example, hindi po nangyari si COVID, eh paano yung TB, tuberculosis? Pareho lang po yun. There are communicable diseases that we will not be able to have um, biosafety and biosecurity as a basic po natin. So same po nung uh, ating PNP Tactical Enforcement Emergency Medical Response, 9.6 uh, million po. So we, if we are just going to total, itong tatlo lang po na course na ito, no? if we are going to do this, these are 90 trained personnel for a total of 1 million pesos. 
360 personnel on the second year for a total of 3 million pesos. 720 personnel trained on the third year and that's 6 million pesos worth of AC contribution. So, sir, as shown, ma'am, um, patulad po ito, pwede po nating uh, suportahan yung ating RMDU personnel to take a course in advanced clinical and occupational toxicology under the PGH or maybe DOH with biosecurity and biosafety principles for nurses. Kunyari lang po yan, uh, sorry, example lang po yan, isa lang po yan sa alam kong available out there that was already shared by Dr. Magira. Another is the tactical emergency casualty care, which uh, ito po sir ma'am, ito po yung nakuha ko under the US Secret Service and the diplomatic security po. So ibig sabihin po sir ma'am, pwede natin gawin ito kasi kayang gawin ng iba. So dapat tayo din po, dapat meron din po tayo nito. Last but not the least po, yung basic occupational safety and health training, which is already given for free ng dole. So sir ma'am, sabihin nyo, E sandali, hindi naman kami gumastos. Exactly, sir. All you need to do is to support it. Tulungan po natin yung RMDU personnel maka-avail po ng mga courses na ito kahit hindi po tayo nag-offer initially, mapapasok pa rin po sa inyo ito because you are an advocate of these trainings. <clears throat> AKC number four po, Moral and Welfare Improvement. Uh, ito po yung scholarship, educational assistance, we can also support RMDU by providing po access to a scholarship program or educational assistance kung meron. Health and wellness benefits kung meron. Assistance during tragedies and crises kung meron. And of course, po sir ma'am, uh, with our chairman, spiritual enhancement. Yung pong online misa, ba, mahal din po yun. Ha? Kasi kung pupunta ka nga naman doon sa, sa pupunta ka naman doon sa Isang church, magta-travel ka pa, magpa-park ka pa, and then yung effort and time, di ba po? If uh, this is already given by our um, chairman, in fact, ginagawa naman po niyan. The secret, ang sekreto lang po dito is alignment. If you're doing it already in your own organization and you think PNP or in this case RMDU can benefit from it, then kayo po yung tulay doon. So the secret po of PGS is really alignment. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Hindi po natin gumawa ng bagong, bagong course o bagong program. But if you're doing something already in your own institutions or organizations or personal po ninyong itong ginagawa, then if you want to share it with us, counted po yun. Counted po yun dito. <clears throat> Next po is the capability enhancement through provisions of additional logistical resources. So ito naman po, cut and dry na po ito. Ito po yung mga donation. So ma marami pong advisory council diyan po sila na tumututok. Ang hindi po nila alam, yung pong previous mas malalaki po yung pera doon. I mean yung yung conversion ng money. Dito po pag may pera ka, eh kung may pera ka, eh kung wala kang pera, <laughs> wala ka namang wala ka namang i-share, eh wala po tayong contribution. Sayang naman po. But in this case po, I found na facilitation po of major infrastructure projects. So let's say for example po ngayon tinatayo po yung NCRPO hospital. I'm not, I'm not saying po makisawsaw pa tayo doon. I'm just saying po maybe we can facilitate. Uh, Pill health accreditation, I don't know. Actually, nilagay ko lang po 'yan. Baka po makatulong. Baka po meron kayong connect. Baka meron po kayong alam. Maybe you can now add that one and be your uh, advisory council contribution. Donations. Po may mga napaglumaan na po kayo. Sa kaysa po, mabulok po dyan sa bahay ninyo or maybe may mga kakilala po kayo. Let's say, for example, big companies po na meron pong pinaglumaan na computer. I'm not saying po na basurahan po kami sa PNP. I'm just saying, paano kung yung logistical supply na yun, pwede pa namin gamitin. So why not share it? And these are one of those best practices po na pwede natin gawin. Innovations and renovations and improvement of our uh, infrastructures. So simple lang po yun. Baka meron po kayong kakilala ng mga construction, meron silang mga ekstrang, ekstrang paint, mga ekstrang semento, mga ekstrang gamit that we can use to improve our facilities. Why not? 
Next po is support of implementation of capability enhancement. Like, uh, Sir Ma'am, baka may pinaglumaan po kayo ng mga camera, computer. Uh, malaking bagay po ito. <clears throat> Last but not the least po yung AKC number 6 is the other contributions in support of PNP. Uh, napakadali lang naman po nito, Sir Ma'am. Attend lang po kayo ng mga activities. Tapos na po yung role nyo dito. And then, yung iba po... Uh, Sila po yung bala sa drinks, refreshments. <laughs> Pero I don't know kung malaki po ito. Pero yan po, actually ma'am sir, kinopya ko lang po yan doon sa isang presentation po ng CPSM. So yan po yung output doon. So how do we now monitor progress of the advisory council? Simply lang po, we need to have first the strategic initiative, uh, strategic shift. No? So the strategic shift is from asa na ba tayo ngayon? And asan po ba tayo pupunta? So as shown po before, uh, may 6 million, may sobra pa, sobra sobra po. I propose po, sir, ma'am, no? Uh, we monitor your progress. Lahat po 'yun it take consideration po. PSME will do the math. All you need to do is to deliver po yung program and initiatives po ninyo. So in this case, that's just say lang po. Again po, sir, no? Uh, this is not cast on stone. Kayo po ang magdi-discuss dito. Let's say from 500 po yearly contribution for calendar year 2021 towards 2 million yearly advisory council contribution from 2 2023 again po sir pwede niyo itataas pwede niyo ibaba nasa sa inyo po yun that ends my presentation po sir ma'am to give you a guide on how what will you be discussing for this advisory council meeting thank you po i now turn over the discussion to our chairman of the Regional Advisory Council, sir. Uh, I'm passing the back to uh, our <clears throat> communication expert, that's uh, Gail, to be the moderator of the uh, discussion or workshop. Okay, hold Gail? on. I'm, yeah, I'm just checking the presentation. Nasaan na ba tayo? Um, hold on. Very interesting yung present ni Sir Ace. Um, uh, ngayon, naiintindihan ko na kung ano yung role ng mga natin, you know, the, the rock sa, sa organization nila, Sir Ace. So, I'm not saying that it's easy, pero it's possible. So, ganun pala siya. Um, yun pala yung maging role natin. Kaya ngayon, hindi na ako kinakabahan. <laughs> Medyo malinaw na siya. I'm just uh, browsing the presentation. I just want to go through it again. Um, dun sa na mention ni Sir Ace na kulang pa na apat on the uh, scorecard. Ano yung mga apat, Sir Ace? So we can target. Yung di ba may variance na negative four? Yung po ba yung mga present yung mga ideas? Dun po ba kukunin yun to complete? Um. Ma'am, uh, first and foremost, ma'am, uh, yung pong mga yung mga negative variants po ninyo na present ko po kanina, it's mm. just that that is just the schedule, meaning mm. the negative variance of four is the negative variance of four advisory council meeting that you still need to do to reach po yung six required per year. So oh. what is very interesting lang po this year is Ang natitira na lang po kasi nung nag-start kayo is anim na buwan. So, titi kung titingnan ninyo, lugi kayo kasi parang minamadali namin kayo. O, ibilisan nyo kasi mag-end mag na yung 2021, wala pa kayong ni isa. Eh, hindi nyo naman po kasalanan yun kasi nga um, ngayon lang po kayo nag-umpisa. So, ang ginawa ko lang po doon sa ating PSMU is to be able to give you a, a brief idea ano yung required. Kaya ba? Um, pero sir, ma'am, no? Um, Kunyari, sir, uh, scenario lang po. At the end of the year, lima lang or apat lang yung naabot ninyo. Um, well, no harm done. Ang point lang naman po, sir, dito, ginawa nyo. Sakay sa wala. It's better than zero. Pero my point is, if kaya naman po yung apat pa na meeting hanggang December, kung kaya lang, uh, you can still uh, reach for that one. Pero again po, um, six means... Six is just a number set by CPSM. It's not really set on stone na uh, pwede pang pito? Pwede. Sampu? Pwede. Dose? Pwede. Isa? Pwede. Pero ang tanong po dito, kung isa lang po yung ginawa ninyo, 
did you hit your objectives? Kasi the only time lang po kayong makakapag-usap with each other officially is during this this meeting. Uh, nandito po kayo, pipre-present po namin sa inyo. Um, you have your parliamentary procedures. So ito naman po yung magiging basis po ng inyong progress or moving forwards or plans moving forward. Thank you, Sir Ace. Um, ito, yung unang question ko kasi um, yung sa scorecard, Sir, na binigay nyo, um, kailangan ba i-hit natin siya within the period like 2021 hanggang 2023 or per year po yun? Para at least alam lang namin yung target namin. Like, you know, kailan natin dapat tong gawin. At saka meron po ba kayo mga certain months na or okay, etong season na to, ito yung kailangan bigay trainings sa sa unit nyo. So that, ano lang po, hindi lang kami ligaw at pwede kami gumawa rin ng timeline para mas madali for us and to partner as well with uh, several organizations. Like in my case, um, marami akong bloodletting activities which I also believe na pwede naman mag-partner PNP and then the tree planting and then rotary clubs as well. So marami. Kaya lang, kailangan lang namin malaman, ako specifically, kung meron po ba kayong sinusunod na you know timeline or you know mga kailangan gatong months tapos na to or itong ganitong year tapos na mam to be clear lang po uh, the targets that will be set here is magdidepende po sa inyo kasi kayo po yung mga ngako dito eh. so when you set your target let's say for example uh, ang ang present ko lang po sir ma'am sa inyo is just let's just say it's a hypothetical Um, projects and trainings and and programs and activities so that meron lang po kayong pag-uusapan kasi mahirap po yung hindi nyo nagagras pag hindi nyo nakikita yung actual numbers eh. Baka puro lang confabulation. Mahirap po yun. Kailangan po may figures tayong pag-uusapan so that you can also uh, make that um, informed decision ano po ba yung importante sa RAC? Ano po ba yung importante po sa RMDU? Basta at the end of the day po sir ma'am Uh, when you come up with your own programs and activities, it should first and foremost po, align po siya sa RMDU because our, 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 uh, the existence of RAC po is basically because we have RMDU to support or mag advice po kayo sa amin. And then at the same time, of course, as I presented before, we are part of the strategy partners towards yung ending po ng lahat na to is our customer. And our customer is the NCRPO personnel. Sila po ang beneficiaries ng lahat ng pinag-uusapan, pinagkagastusan po natin ng oras ngayon. So yun po. Um, again po sir, ma'am, no? uh, please do not be uh, baka ma-confuse ma po kayo sa akin. Uh, these are just proposals. And at the end of the day po sir, ma'am, your advisory council, kayo po yung magdi-decide. Ano po yung ipapangako ninyo for RMDU so that at the end of the year, ito po yung babalik-balikan natin. Nahit nyo po ba? Nahit nyo po ba yung ipinangako ninyo? If you did not, ang question lang po dito is, ba't nga ba hindi namin nahit yun? Bakit kaya? So, ganun po ma'am. Um, hindi naman po ito, sabi natin, cast on stone. Eh. Kasi you can still change. Again, depende po sa situation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Ace. Um, would like to hear uh, Councillor Pami Zamora kasi I believe she's uh, very experienced already with such you know um, organizations um councillor pami um how would you think you'll be able to contribute um sa mga ginagawa natin dito sa RAC at saka baka ma meron na po kayong mga existing projects na pwede na nating i-align so we could you know start already para hindi sayang yung time kasi august na so we september to four months na lang at gusto natin meron tayong magagawa for for the organization Ms. Gail? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Gail? Can I yep. say something po? Okay. Sure, sure, ma'am. Kasi dun sa trainings po. Okay. Yung trainings po kasi na sinasabi ni Sir Ace, actually, it's very easy to collaborate with DOH po and Tagig City on this kasi we already have programs na ginagawa rin po ng PNP. Since they are a major partner agency po ng DOH, like for example, meron na po sila before nung member po ako ng RAC nila, We have the Hypertension and Diabetes Club. So, lahat po ng trainings ng DOH that involves the Hypertension and Diabetes Club, kasama sila. Smoking cessation programs, kasama rin po sila. 
yung Red Orchid Awards, kasama rin po sila. Actually, na-awardan po ang NCRPO on that. Tapos meron kaming binigay sa kanilang maintenance meds for PNP personnel with comorbidity. So they were given amlodipin, losartan, glycosides, and bastetin. So marami na po silang programs. Actually, tapos doon sa immunization activities po ng Taguig City, uh, health personnel po ng, ng RHS was also involved yung MRC, uh, yung MROPV, oral polio vaccination, yung uh, measles vaccination. So nagpunta po kami dyan. DOH and Taguig City Health staff were there. Tapos pinuntahan po namin lahat ng families na may mga children na eligible for vaccination po. So pinuntahan namin sila, binakunahan po sila dun sa daycare at saka dun sa barracks. So we can continue all of that po. Tapos yung trainings naman po for PNP health personnel, I would suggest to make use of what's available na po na libre. For example, marami pong training sa DOH sa website ng DOH Academy, they are all for free. So, libre po lahat yan. Tapos, with CPD units pa po yan. We can also involve them yung mga trainings po na urgently needed right now in res response to COVID, the pandemic. So, pwede po namin silang i-train on a different kinds of COVID vaccines, uh, kung paano po magpatakbo ng PTMFs and all that. Lahat po yun, kaya po naman natin mag-collaborate na lang with other agencies. Like for example kami, DOH, DSWD, DO, DOLE. Libre po yan. Wala po yan bayad. Wow. Thank you so much, Ma'am Ninia. At least dun sa aspect na yun, medyo malaki-laki na yung mga help natin. Uh, before we go to Doc uh, Go, uh, balikan ko lang si Councilor <laughs> Pami kasi siya yung una kong uh, tinanong kanina. Uh, Councilor Pami, yeah, being with uh, representing the LGU, Ano po kaya yung ma-contribute natin para makatulong since marami na tayo doon from Aminia? Ano, ako ang talagang nag nag ano sa akin nung binabasa ko yung presentation, yung may, mga gamit, ma'am, uh, madali po sa amin sa tagig sa local government na makapag-share po ng gamit kasi uh, una po sa lahat, ang NCRPO po, ang Camp Bagong Diwa po ay nasa tagig. So hindi po mahirap sa amin na mag-share kasi parte po ng Tagig ang Camp Bagong Diwa, ang NCRPO. Pati po ang SPD po, nasa Tagig po yan. So in fact, um, many, many occasions po na nakatulong po yung aming... Uh, de then po si Mayor Lani po, Mayor pa po siya nun. Uh, pati po badminton court, ma'am, napaayos po namin dyan kasi uh, syempre mahalaga sa kanila yung... Uh, kumbaga yung health nga ng mga ating kapulisan. So that's not difficult. Uh, madali po makipag-partner sa PNP. Uh, Sir Ace, wag po kayong mag-alala kasi uh, una dahil nga yung NCRPO na sa tagig, hindi po tayo mahirapan dyan. And also, segundahan ko lang si Ma'am Ninya, yung training po talaga, um, uh, yung mayor namin ngayon, si Mayor Dino, very active siya sa COVID response. So uh, talagang in-encourage niya na nag-gather kami kahit online or uh, pwedeng physical din kung hindi na ECQ yung training ng aming ano, SEDSU department po. Kasi magandang nalalaman po ng ating mga kababayan na you know what to do pag tinamaan ng COVID. Pwede pong, mag, pwede pong sa bahay lang, pwede namang hindi rin sa bahay, pwedeng you know mas maganda po yung collaborative effort kasi Tayo tayo rin naman to, sir, di ba? Nasa tagig kayo, sino pa po bang magtutulungan kung hindi tayo tayo? So, um, I'm very excited sa mga nabasa ko. Um, Kayang-kaya po natin yan. Um, magandang magsimula na po tayo. Medyo nakaka-excite po. Kaya maraming salamat at naging party po ako nito. Yay! Thank you so much. We're so lucky to have Ma'am Pami. Ayun, ang dami na Sir Ace. Nakikita ko na yung malaking ngiti ni Sir Ace. Uh, let's have uh, Doc John Gillard go. Hi Doc! Yeah. Hi Ma'am Gail. And uh, thank you to the presentation of Sir Ace. Very enlightening, no? very useful information to guide what we can do uh, for the organization and the uh, stakeholders and customers of the organization. Ang naisip ko lang po nung pinapresent ni Sir Ace yung kanyang PowerPoint kanina, 
yung sabi niya kasi to provide uh, strategic guidance to the organization to support the organization uh, and uh, and other things. No? Ang, ang, ang napunta sa isip ko, the critical uh, role of the of, 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 of the PNP pero naiconnect ko rin siya sa konteksto ng COVID uh, lalo na because of the Delta variant as emphasized by Councillor Pami. So ang ang naisip ko like how how do we keep the police safe uh, from COVID-19 uh, because if they get sick you know who will take care and and uh, and and the police uh, offices they they close who will take care of the uh, peace and order the security in the in in the community who will do the things that uh, that they will do so mapaparalyze talaga siya so i think it's very important to keep the police force uh, away uh, from covid so uh, so important yun. And at the same time uh, because they're also exposed to the community so there are uh, some of the people who are really at high risk for for getting the virus from the community at the same time of course uh, they also belong to a workplace so important rin yun na uh, uh, in the context of covid how do we keep our workplace safe from from covid how do we protect them from getting the uh, the virus so that you know they 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 will be strong and healthy and continue to do the things that they want to do so for me i think that's something that probably we can do to provide uh, guidance uh, to the to the organization on what can it do to protect its uh, its force, its police force against COVID? And maybe, siguro meron na pong uh, plano ito. Meron na, I'm I'm sure there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of activities being done. But if there is a plan, maybe as uh, members of the advisory council, we can probably try to revisit the plan and enhance it uh, and see what else can be done. Ano, to really um, make this area of, uh, of, of work no, uh, stronger. Kung kailangan ng orientation uh, for the rest of the, of the health and non-health staff uh, all over the country, maybe that's something that we can do. May mga DOH modules naman na pwedeng gawin, sabi nga ni Ma'am Nina, ni Ma'am Alan Nina. So I think that's, that's, that, that's one that uh, probably we can do. Also, kasi di ba, the police force uh, is also uh, service-oriented and they're part of the COVID-related uh, response in the community. Before, I, I know, I'm not sure if they're continuing doing contact tracing together with the health, uh, health staff, no? But uh, alam ko, pag yung nagbabahay-bahay uh, for contact tracing or yung case finding, yung mga health staff, critical talaga yung assistance na binibigay Ng, 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 ng police. So, siguro, so how oriented and how knowledgeable, uh, how capable ba our field uh, uh, based na police force on really trying to be safe and uh, aware, adept on doing contact tracing, on the procedures for isolation and case finding and testing. So, baka isa yun na pwede nating isama sa activities natin. Really, an orientation or training on COVID, no? how to uh, keep our police force uh, safe from COVID, but at the same time, how to continue to be of uh, help, of service to the COVID response in the, in, in the community. Yung sa second part ng suggestion ko is related to what Ma'am Allen Nina has already mentioned. No? So it's still, parang how do we keep how do we keep the police force uh, healthy uh, and well so siguro baka may mga health trainings na pwedeng magawa like healthy lifestyle tobacco cessation uh, yung keeping ideal body weight yung mga ganyan ba so maybe we can have also some programs on that which we can try to uh, alam mo to uh, to orient our our police force because if they're healthy then you know they are more yung nakakondisyon sila 
na gumawa talaga ng mga dapat silang uh, gagawin and uh, we will they will, we they will all be of better service to the community so those are just some ideas that i wanted to share back to you ma'am gail thank you doc yeah very nice suggestions i'm taking notes actually of all your suggestions and um yun i'm sure marami tayong magagawa for the uh, for the organization i'm turning over uh, the floor to sir ace sir ace uh, Ma'am, hingan din po natin ng, ng ano ma'am, ng uh, maybe statement din po yung other advisory council natin in attendance. Like si Attorney Flores po, sir, um, baka meron po kayong insights or maybe uh, may, nakita, may narinig po kayo dun sa presentation that you, you think uh, meron po tayong pwedeng pag-usapan doon. Yes, uh, I'm trying to figure out ano yung uh, pwedeng sa mga contacts and uh, mga clients and uh, mga partners ko sa ibang uh, uh, organizations and agencies how to uh, contribute to those things na na, ano, na discuss mo sir Ace like for example yung uh, scholarship kasi yung mga companies sa mga clients ako na uh, I, I think that uh, they can can provide scholarship for our personnel in the uh, in the unit and also yung uh, Siguro, maganda siguro idea yung ano yung tag dito uh, fundraising for yung mga nabagit na balik skwela project and so on and so forth. Uh, sa so tingin ko pag uh, yung formal yung uh, fundraising project natin madaling makapag uh, uh, raise ng funds sa mga partners, mga clients and mga other contacts ng mga members ng ng and uh, besides, uh, PNP naman to, eh, everyone wants to support PNP. And so, sa tingin ko, madali itong uh, gawin pagka uh, nasama natin sa mga plans and projects at na internet natin. Yeah. Sir Ace, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, baka sir, hindi eh, ko lang nabanggit to ko sir kanina, pero personal experience twice. Um, madala sir, yung pagkamatay na isang tao, um, talagang lahat nangyayari pero one of the things that I think na undervalue madalas lalo PNP po is yung po ano yung burial burial uh, services sa PNP naman po kasi meron tayong regional chaplain pero sometimes po sir eh, like yung mga dependents uh, hindi siya kasama doon or yung mga kamag-anak minsan hindi sila kasama doon yung police sir uh, we'll have that kind of difficulty sometimes. So, I, I don't know, sir. Uh, just, ano, na, na-remind lang ako kasi I'm, I'm, I'm also in the process of that. So, nakita ko lang po na mahal po pala ang cremation, 60,000 po siya. Hindi biro po yun, nabubunutin mo lang siya bigla sa out of nowhere. Muntik na akong mag-loan. Muntik na rin po akong isinangla ko yung, yung sasakyan ko just to get the amount. Yeah, kasi wala akong nakasubi ng ganong kalaki. So sabi ko, oh, okay, sige. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe insurance or maybe a partnership with St. Peter. I don't, actually, hindi ko po alam, sir, na iisip-isip ko lang. Uh, maybe you know someone, or you know, you know some, some way on how to alleviate this problem. Kasi I, I remember po, in the past, meron po akong unit doon sa PSG. Nang ginawa po namin, um, part ho nung pondo na pinaglagyan namin is nakipag-tie up po kami sa St. Peter. Binabayaran po namin yun monthly. Tapos nung nabayaran na siya, para siyang revolving. Para pag namatayan yung tao namin, ibibigay namin yung plan sa kanya. Wala na siya intindin. Tapos babayaran niya, babalik niya yung pera para maisoli lang po sa amin. Pero at least hindi, hindi lang siya yung... Uh, Sabado, ma'am, sir, ang hirap palang mag, maghanap ng pagsasanglaan. Uh, <laughs> Saka ng loaning institute na bukas. Wala, isarado lahat. So, yun, naisip ko lang po yun. So, yun lang po. Thank you. I think, Sir Ace, uh, that will fall under the financial and wealth management trainings. Marami naman tayong contact sa ganun. Kasi siguro kulang lang talaga sa support, you know, sa mga ganong trainings na pinipresent sa PNP kasi hindi naman I mean mababa lang naman yung cost noon eh if you're going to invest eh po ba 
Siguro yun lang talaga kasi I I I noticed dito sa Philippines yun ang kulang talaga sa atin yung financial and wealth management training. We have the money pero we don't know where to put the money, where to invest. So siguro uh, itong pandemic talagang nag-open yung eyes natin, you know, especially on the insurance and um uh, yun, uh, the financial and wealth management. That's a very nice ano sir um realization as well. Uh, siguro pwede tayo mag-tie up with mga institutions na mga nag-offer ng ganyan and then yun i-offer din nila sa 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 unit nyo na siguro pwedeng salary deduction or you know kung ano yung magaang para sa lahat kasi makakatulong talaga yan definitely so yun so, thank you ma'am uh, uh, so we have two more si Sir Louis Sir yeah, and, Sir, Louis. Uh, Sir Dr. Maghirang before we yeah. go to our chairman sure. and then of course last Last but not least po yung chief natin. So, Sir Louis, Sir Louis, uh, baka meron po kayong gustong i-share, realization, insights. Sir Louis, yeah. marami yan, uh, mga trainings. <laughs> yeah, sige, well, like, like to win that, if I all support naman ako with any uh, training na uh, uh, gustong gawin, no? Uh, under that, may, may it be, it extends more than just uh, the scope of medical. Ika nga, Ah, uh, parang yung template lang no, na sabi natin na uh, DOH, ano, Department of Health, oh, magkumuha tayo ng ano, uh, bakuna pang rabies. Na uh, sabi pa, yung rabies naman para sa mga warm-blooded animals naman 'yan, hindi naman sa tao, so, hindi concerned ang DOH. Oo, pero kinakagat nila yung kliyente ko, yung tao. So, it extends, no, that's just a template of what extends further than just, you know, the protection of our people. Diba? With something na parang kala mo hindi related. Hindi gumawa tayo ng coordination. Okay, with, with the training, ganun din. Uh, in a sense, more than this, like we, we are to expect anything. No? Like, uh, like uh, just an incident may may happen instantly. We, we just we, I mean, waking up the following day. But, you know, to properly prepare more than one person knowledgeable of doing one thing would be an uh, enhancement uh, upgrade so for for training and all these uh, support namin yun uh think tanks to go in a good direction on what to do alternatives like you know much you know the scope pero kung tingin mga contribute kami please uh, make sure that that will be there uh yun lang yung mga uh more on that mas, uh, when when here full support naman tayo thank you so much Ayun. Bilang masyadong malinaw talaga Sir Louie naglalakad. <laughs> may may hina, may hina. <laughs> uh, uh, may But I'm sure naman maganda rin yung mga suggestions and intentions ni Sir Louie. Although yun nga, he can also be a part of the online shows that we will do and we will resume soon para naman uh, maumpisahan na rin natin uh, yung na, na, na stop lang for a while. Para malaking um, tulong na rin yun sa ano, sa unit. Yes, yes sir. Sino po bang uh, last? Si uh, sir, si Doc Ellis. Uh, Ma'am Ma Gail, uh, nabagit kasi ni Sir Louie yung aso. Uh, um, inform ko lang po kayo Sir Mama, malawak na malawak po ang NCRPO. Meron po tayong K9 unit dito. Regional K9 unit. So, uh, sa bahay po, panigurado maraming may aso na pulis. So, I'm sure... Meron pong silbi po yung nabanggit po ni Sir Louie na um, vaccines for dogs or um, our our pets. So anyway, Sir Ma'am. Vaccines! Ma vaccines pala yung nabanggit niya. Opo. Kasi ba... Oh, kasi... Baka lapit pala yung microphone. Public place kasi. So anyway, yung example nun kasi yung yung isa doon na nagsabi sila. Parang Department of Health doon lang sa tao. Then sabi nila... Isipin natin paano magkaroon ng anti-rabies. So the anti-rabies is the was na iniisip nila was primarily for the pet, for the, the dog, for the animals. Kaya nasabihan nga siya bilang yung DOH. Sabi, eh, mga tao, yung kliyente natin, hindi naman aso. Sabi nung taga DOH, oo, pero kinakagat nila yung tao, yung magiging kliyente ko. So more on the prevention of that. So parang ganun lang, no? medyo malawak na. And to align nga, uh, siguro maganda yung timing na pag- Sabi ni Sir Case on this. I'm being asked to come up with a course for um, K9. So yung blog CPR, choking, bleeding management, saka yung factors and dislocations just parang provide uh, protective or practical medicine 
pwede, pag naayos ko na, pwede, pwede yung share through the RAC. Thank you. Thank oh, so, you. Pwede ka na rin gagawa, gumawa na gano'ng training, sir, pati CPR sa mga dogs. May gano'n? Paging hayop That's na, very hayop interesting. na council member. Oh, wow. That's very interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, I, noted yun, Sir Louie. Thank you. <laughs> actually, yeah. ma'am, uh, yung pong ano, yung pong aso is also an officer. Uh, sa ibang bansa po, there, they may, may mga badge number pa yung mga yan. Eh. Pero more than anything else po, ma'am, sir, uh, the dogs, hindi sila po ordinaryng dogs. Eh. In fact, mahal ang dogs. Um, one of the dogs na binenta nun, ano na yun, sir? Ah? Retired na dog. 500,000. Wow. Retired siya na sniffing dog. Eh, just imagine, mag, uh, bata pa lang siya, tinitrain. Numalaki yan. Pinakain yan. Trainin yan. Mahirap pag-training ng aso. Mahal po ang training ng aso. Tapos, mamamatay lang ng basta-basta. Eh, para lang ding officer din po natin, it can be considered po na ganun. Pero nabanggit ko lang po, sorry. Nabanggit din po kasi ni Sir Louie. So next po, si Dr. Magirang, sir. Uh, good afternoon uli. Sana naririnig nyo ko. Sa, uh, medyo maingay lang, sorry. I'll position lang ako na medyo hindi masyado maingay. Uh, Narimomonitor ko naman lahat yung sinasabi. Actually, ang sa akin is we don't really have to reinvent the wheel. Lahat na it's just a matter of alignment of all the activities, intended activities. Napaka-rich na ng resource na narinig ko from si, si Ma'am na lang ng PAMI plus sa atin si, si Ma'am Nina. Lahat, ang dami ng resources. So I don't think we really have to reinvent the wheel. It's just a matter of... Uh, timing when to utilize which particular training is in season or in need. So yun po yung masasabi ko lang na nandun na. It's just a matter, it's set in place. It's just a matter of trying to to place the the proper uh, needs assessment at a particular time para ma-utilize po yung mga resources na yun. So very much aligned lahat yung endeavor ng AC saka yung existing projects with the intention of ano uh, ng uh, actual ano na actual objectives of the unit itself okay so yun lang po maraming salamat thank you doc Ellis siguro pag wala na rin pandemic pwede na tayo doc Ellis mag medical mission ano <laughs> Hala na. Ayaw na ako pakinggan ni Dr. Ellis. Sir Ace, tapos na lahat. Sige, ano? sir. Uh, so, ma'am, sir, uh, tapos na po lahat. So, we now come to the end. Uh, before our chief will give her message, uh, we now come to our chairman po muna, uh, si Father Salvador. Father? Yeah, I, I did uh, some due diligence in trying to... Uh, decipher the tasking of the advisory council. And so one-liners like strategic advice, that's one. Evaluation and revisioning, that's the second. And then the third is uh, um, resourcing, which uh, most of you have talked about. I'd like just to pinpoint, especially in the strategic advice, yung, alam nyo, working with the uh, poor and even as a chaplain of uh, the Marines, the um, even sa NBI, sa PIDEA, even uh, police and army. There are several uh, nerve centers, like it should be anything that you're going to do, it should be issue based and needs based. You issue, like take for example, a simple issue of uh, um, stress ng mga police no makapatay ka malaki yun eh no hindi hindi biro yun o kaya yung mga tinatawag nating uh, mental health ng mga mga police natin lalo lalo na siguro yung mga image building no kailangan ta ingat yung yung uh, image ng police no so i think that's one should be really uh, Anything that we do should be really issued issues uh, that are really very relevant nowadays, no? and the needs needs based. 
Secondly, yung uh, uh, you said about the tactical medicine and the doctor Maghira, no? I'm very happy that to have that because here in the uh, community-based work of the police, we would like to uh, partner with them about urban survival. Kanila na nag-distribute kami 400 package ng tiktetene rice galing sa resources namin. Eh, nagugutom yung mga tricycle drivers eh. Lalo na yung mga ibang tao. And so, also, we'd like to emphasize in this uh, kasi pari ako, <laughs> uh, yung medical ethics at saka yung police ethics which we have to really develop. And I think uh, Ellis uh, Maghirang is expert in medical ethics, but we really have to have a, lot, a higher grade of uh, uh, police ethics, uh, philosophy uh, of uh, the police and the theological uh, background. Maybe we could make a police theology. Um, tapos yung, siyempre, everything boils down in, uh, in uh, money then. No? Kasi yung, I run eight security agencies. Ang nangyari, ginawa namin paluwaga. Mas lumakas yung paluwaga, mas mayaman pa kaysa doon sa, do sa security agency. Bakit? Nagtulungan eh, nagtulungan. Ganun din naman, marami naman mga foundations dyan. So the world is run by connectors and very happy that there are many media people around here that will connect us to different uh, sourcing. Kaya yung number three sourcing. Alam nyo, 71 years old na ako. Nung nagsasalita si Major, talagang tuwan-tuwa ako. Parang bumatauli ako. Thank you very much, Major. <laughs> you gave us life. And when there is activities, there is life. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So now, sir, ma'am, uh, we now uh, are ready to hear the message of our chief. Police Colonel Maria Nenita Senador De Leon. Ma'am? Yes po. Good afternoon. Am I being heard clear po? Yes. Loud yes, and clear po, ma'am. Yes. First and foremost, as uh, Chief of the Regional Medical Dental Unit NCRPO family, I would like to thank each and every one of the members of the Regional Advisory Council for, for um, gracing us their presence and uh, giving us their time. Alam ko marami po tayong ginagawa. Uh, lahat po naman talaga ngayon is exerting extra effort uh, since it's a pandemic. Now, I have heard uh, all, your, um, uh, all your plans and programs. I'm, my heart is very full right now. Dahil bibigyan niyo po for further time and the plans that you, to, you plan to um, assist, us, as, assist us with. Uh, I am very, very grateful in behalf of the RMD family. However, sir, gusto ko lang sana mag-present. Um, I would like to introduce to you yung family po na gusto niyong tulungan, what we have accomplished already, what we are doing right now, how we are doing right now. Uh, actually, video presentation lang po of our accomplishments since the pandemic para lang po ma-introduce ko sa inyo um, the family of RMD and CRPO, which you... Uh, uh, which you have promised actually kasi nagpirmahan tayo kanina at nagtaas kayo ng kanang kamay for two years po. <laughs> I am holding you into that. So, ito lang po. At least uh, makita nyo po where, where we are right now. So, uh, if you may po, uh, let me just, uh, if you can share the screen. Hindi ako marunong. Sandali lang. Uh, sa, paano ko i-share screen? Nasa desktop po. Share screen. Share. Ah, uh, this yon yung presentation. Share ka na. Um, nakikita na ba? Wow, ang ganda. May sound. Ma'am, wala, wala pong sound, ma'am. Pag uh, share niyo po siya, pindutin niyo po yung bago tumuloy dito, ma'am. Merong merong checkbox, ma'am, sa baba. Nasaan, dear? Sa baba Sorry, po, ma'am. Saan saan chat box sa baba? Ah, wait, wait ma'am. Uh, I-out nyo po muna ma'am ngayon. Out nyo uh -huh. po muna. Escape? Uh, hindi ma'am. Uh, out ma'am as in tanggalin nyo po sa share. Uh, stop share. 
Yes. And then, share kayo, ma'am. May prompt dyan, ma'am, nakalagay doon, share pati share. yung audio. Nakalagay, uh, ma'am, sa so baba. May checkbox. Share audio. Share sound. Yes. Yes. Tapos, Saka, ma'am, kayo mag-share. For video clip. Uh, Tapos, ma'am, mag- Yeah. Yan. Yan. Sige, try, ma'am. Try. Subok. Try. Yun. Karo na? The Regional Medical and Dental Unit, NCRPO, under the leadership of Police Colonel Maria Nenita S. De Leon, demonstrated outstanding commitment, incomparable diligence, and dedication to duty, reflecting great credit in achieving the unit's mission and vision in partnership with various organizations to provide apt, comprehensive, and excellent health services to PNP personnel, their dependents, and authorized civilians. With the unselfish action and commitment in delivering quality healthcare services, this RMDU provided constant positive results in the pursuit of ensuring the safety and well-being of the 22,432 strong NCRPO frontliners and the community during this challenging time. Our strategies include proactive health monitoring wherein we conducted visitation of forward deployed NCRPO personnel in quarantine checkpoints and the distribution of deployment health kits. We also made every effort to check the health status of well and sick personnel through phone calls and sending messages of health advisories through text blast. To ensure the strict adherence to health procedures, protocols, guidelines, and policies among different units of NCRPO, Personnel of this RMTU conduct a regular inspection of offices. Likewise, we initiated a hand washing campaign through a dance presentation video showing the proper hand washing procedure as one way of preventing the spread of COVID 19 infection, which was posted in various social media platforms. With the support of the command group of NCRPO, this RMTU implemented no home quarantine policy since the initial stages of our endeavors against COVID-19 and was able to establish and maintain 10 special care facilities with a bed capacity of 835, catering to NCRPO personnel as well as those assigned with other PNP units. Through our sustained efforts, these SCFs were also certified by the Department of Health as temporary treatment and monitoring facilities for close contact, suspected and confirmed COVID-19 patients. From June 1, 2020 to May 31, 2021, we have steadfastly delivered quality healthcare services to 8,025 COVID-19 patients. Likewise, our SCF staff provided unwavering support to PNP personnel during the upsurge of COVID-19 cases, March to April 2021, especially those who were severely infected when hospital accommodation was difficult and almost impossible to obtain. Lubos po ako nagpapasalamat at natugunan po agad ang aking medical needs sa NCRPO Special Care Facility 2. Maraming salamat sa mga staff. Utang ko sa kanila buhay ko. Thank you po. Renovation of said facilities and improvement of equipment are ceaselessly facilitated to provide the atmosphere that our patients deserve. In fact, our facilities are often visited by dignitaries from government and non-government organizations. In appreciation of our undertakings, various donations were presented to us such as one ambulance unit, viral transport mediums, medical equipment, medical supplies, food and groceries. Our recovered COVID-19 patients were also encouraged and accompanied to participate in the convalescent plasma donation program to help those critically infected. In July 2020, this RMDU assisted NCRPO in the creation and launching of station health units to intensify the delivery of healthcare to all NCRPO personnel down to the station level. Presently, we are directly overseeing the 52 SHUs with 311 personnel that act as force multipliers in monitoring the health status of police officers and persons under police custodies within their respective AOR, assisting personnel due for APE, PFT or medical evaluation, and providing medical support during station police operations. Trainings and seminars were conducted to further enhance the skills, knowledge, and values in the performance of their assigned duties, such as trauma care and basic life support training, contact tracing seminar, and lectures regarding COVID-19 patient management, vaccination, and other health-related topics. 
NCRPO was able to comply with the administrative support for COVID-19 Task Force Directive that all personnel should undergo RT-PCR tests through the sustained effort of this RMDU to conduct targeted group testing in coordination with various molecular laboratories or swap facilities. As part of our partnership with stakeholders, NCRPO personnel were detailed in various quarantine facilities and testing centers while we oversee and monitor their activities. In coordination with the Department of Health and the local government units within our AOR, this RMDU facilitated the COVID-19 vaccination rollout to 11,747 NCRPO personnel, or 52% of the total strength as of this writing. Lectures, counseling, and posting of infographics regarding COVID-19 vaccines are continuously conducted to ease the concerns and misconception of personnel and eventually encourage them to participate in the vaccination program. We acknowledge that the mental health of personnel is as important as their physical well-being. Therefore, endeavors in relation to mental health red flags were initiated such as the conduct of training to NCRPO personnel who are psychology graduates on psychosocial support processing, stress debriefing to COVID-19 patients after undergoing quarantine procedure, and personnel involved in arm encounter in their families, lectures on stress and anger management, and telecounseling to all admitted COVID-19 confirmed, suspected, and quarantined close contacts. As a mental health advocate, this RMDU spearheaded the establishment of SCF Healing Garden, wherein patients under quarantine are encouraged to engage in gardening to promote their physical and mental well-being. Likewise, this initiative also addresses food insecurity brought about by lockdowns due to the COVID-19 pandemic and promotes positive waste management by reducing, reusing, and recycling plastic bottles and tires. Innovations and improvements were instilled so that other health services can still be provided to our clients even during the pandemic. These include the installation of dental consultation booth, placement of air humidifier at dental treatment room, and use of high vacuum aerosol suction during dental procedures. Our medical dispensary was likewise improved to provide better medical services through medical consultation of NCRPO personnel, their dependents, authorized civilians, and PUPCs. Medical services also include VMI validation for promotion and schooling, medical evaluation for equipment, restoration, TPPD, RHE, APE, and PFT, and validation of medical certificates. On January 22, 2021, a groundbreaking ceremony was conducted for the proposed construction of the NCRPO Medical Center, Recruitment Administrative Building, and Multi-Purpose Building in partnership with the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation and Resource World Philippines. Despite the pandemic, this RMDU was able to provide medical assistance during Typhoon Raleigh and Ulysses. We have also initiated relief operations through distribution of food packs to the people of Bicol Region and Isabela Province who were heavily affected by the typhoon. As part of our continuing learning and growth, the Police Management Facebook page was created as an educational platform for all PNP personnel other law enforcers, and the public to learn and explore information about leading and managing police offices and organization. Our MDU and CRPO personnel continuously work hard to provide the best services to our constituents. We are currently ensuring a safe, fair and transparent NCRPO patrolman, patrolwoman recruitment process, especially the conduct of psychological and psychiatric examination and physical, medical and dental examination phases. Moreover, we have provided medicines, flu and HPV vaccines, and other free healthcare services. We are also active in participating in the various command activities and extending medical support by providing medical teams with ambulance, attending of blue masses, joining the Barangayanihan and other PCR activities. The exemplary performance of RMDU and CRPO under the capable leadership of Police Colonel Maria Nenita S. De Leon was recognized with numerous awards received by the unit and individually by its personnel. These recognitions sustain and oblige us to deliver a high standard of healthcare services to our clients. With that, we shall strive to fulfill the NCRPL trust of Servisyong Tama, Tapat, May Tapang at Malasakit para sa Mamamayan.
Ang galing. Grabe, ang dami. Congratulations po. <laughs> Thank you po. Um, I just, uh, I showed our presentation para lang po kasi may idea kayo, ma'am, on, on um, our job here. And um, although it may look a lot, uh, kulang pa rin po, we are still doing um, our best, lalo na po ngayon. Our main focus right now is the surge that is happening in, in NCR po. And we are doubling our efforts po uh, to contain the infection, the, the, the virus among the personnel of NCRPO. And right now po, uh, we only have one medical doctor la po uh, sa Bikutan, sa Kambagong Diwa to handle po yung special care facilities natin. Marami na po kasi ang pumapasok sa quarantine facilities natin inside uh, Camp Bagong Diwa and other facilities also. Um, plus, um, tayo lang po, uh, ang Camp Bagong Diwa lang po, or NCRPO lang po ang may quarantine facilities for PNP personnel who are um, close contacts and um, suspected po. So I think that was the best practice that we were able to do. That's why we were able to contain um, uh, in a much lesser time yung search po last March. However, ngayon po kasi, nakita niyo po kanina, we have a emergency treatment facility for those with, with, with symptoms. Um, inalagaan po namin sila doon yung mild uh, symptoms uh, and then we transfer pag, pag naging severe na po. However, there are times most uh, lalo na po nung March, na nakapagpagaling na po kami ng severe sa aming emergency treatment facility. Salamat po sa walang tulog at uh, hirap po ng aming mga doktor at aming mga nurses po talaga kasi hindi po namin mailipat dahil uh, napakahirap po maglipat po talaga noon. We were able to, ilang po severe, nakita niyo po si Colonel Menor kanina He is our logistics officer, our R4. He's a full colonel. He is in line sa Asian Hospital po. Nakalinya po for admission kasi he, he is uh, he was using uh, yung tatlong oxygen tanks na 50 pounds. Uh, three per day po. Dahil po hirap na po siya noon. But uh, hindi po namin maipasok sa Asian Hospital despite the funds that we have para sa kanya dahil po wala ng lugar noon and uh, awa, sa, uh, awa naman po ng Diyos ayan po siya, buhay pa, humihinga <laughs> we were able, tapang ng loob lang po talaga ng, siguro po maganda po ng mga doktor at mga nurses dito pati yung, yung mga nandito po sa RMD and CRP ay mga police medyo yung lakas ng loob po namin e doble po sa iba so yun po so, kasi so, Y yun po talaga ang ano yun ang focus namin ngayon uh, so yung sa sa advisory council po uh, doon po kasi ang focus namin ngayon yung pro yung yung mga trabaho namin uh, we have to contain the virus and uh, that's where we would need assistance po talaga uh, containment of the virus yung 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 kanyang infection sa sa kapulisan po na NCRPO nandun po kami plus yung nasa quarantine facilities natin that they remain mild to no symptoms at all and not to be elevated sa severe po kasi it would be very hard for us. So, um, yung, yung napag-usapan niyo po kanina, equipments, thank you very much kung mga ano, siguro po medicines at saka uh, we would like to extend, uh, actually the HNCR has been very supportive. Thank you very much. Si Ma'am Galema, palagi naming Kinukulit yan. Maraming salamat din po. Um, okay. Yun lang po kung ma-extend namin po sa mga, sa, sa mga nasa checkpoints po. Uh, vaccination rollout. We are at, uh, I think, um, we're almost 100% po. Dahil talagang hinahabol namin yung mga kapulisan. Ang natira na lang po na hindi namin, hindi talaga kami maka 100% is because of those with medical conditions. Yung mga pregnant, lactating mothers. Yun po talaga ang medyo... Um, deferred po siguro sa ngayon. Pero uh, hindi naman po sila sa hindi magpapavaccine. And of course, yung, yung, yung very, very few na medical conditions. Pero talagang uh, we motivate them to 
um, believe in the vaccine po kasi we cannot force them. So yun po ang ginagawa natin. Uh, Nakita nyo naman na una po si regional director namin para maipakita yung vaccination is important. And uh, with the statistics po namin sa hospitalization and the deaths, for the last, actually for the last week, we had three deaths actually. Three deaths sa NCRPO. Uh, yung dalawa po unvaccinated. Yung isa po, uh, isang uh, uh, first dose pa lang po parang Uh, na-injection na po siya ng first dose August 4, August 7. Nagkaroon na po siya ng symptoms. Tuloy-tuloy na po. So, he, he was only 34 years old. He's very young to have that. To, to, pero may, kaya lang po diabetic. So, all our deaths have comorbidity. So, we're very, very careful sa, mga, sa may comorbidities. Talagang pinilit po namin sila for vaccination. Actually, mas maganda yung term na motivation, encourage and motivate them. Pero, Um, actually, namimilit po talaga ako para para, maipala, para pag nasa kalye po sila, they will be more protected. That, because that's the only way that, that RMDU will be able to help and will be, do, will be doing its mandate, which is to take care of those who serve and protect her. So, kung dun po, kung kumari po, dun sana yung assistance sa amin, maraming maraming salamat po talaga. I think na mahaba na nasabi ko, So, uh, thank you very much po, sir. Marami kaming quarantine facilities. If you would like to visit, uh, we are more than willing to um, accommodate you here. Kung makiki gusto nyo makita po yung quarantine facilities natin para hands-on makita nyo po how, how we take care of those who serve and protect and we do take care of them. So, maraming salamat po. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, sirs, uh, I think uh, this is the end of our, our activities. Unless otherwise, po, our chairman has uh, other things that she, he wants to convey as well. Okay, so sir, I, I see a, uh, <laughs> a sign. <Yes. laughs> so sir, ma'am, uh, this actually is the end of our activity. Uh, we would like to thank everyone po. For the participation. Sir, uh, to our chairman, may I ask an adjournment of this meeting, sir, with a short prayer, sir, kung okay lang po. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bow your heads and pray for God's mercy and uh, blessing, especially in these troubled times. Dear Lord, continually bless our police and all. keep them safe, especially in these very uh, difficult uh, COVID times. Most of all, give them enough courage and strength, especially those that are in alliance to the work of the police. And so may Almighty God bless you and make you happy all the days of your life. The Lord be with you and also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you and Thank you very much, sir. Ma'am, that, con uh, that concludes po the advisory council meeting. See you on our second, uh, third advisory council meeting. Po. Sir, ma'am, maraming salamat po. And afternoon po. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you po. Thank you. Okay. Ingat po lahat. Wow, Gip. Congratulations. Ang galing mo. <laughs> Nagmana po ako sa inyo, Father. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Ace. <laughs> Condolence again, po. sir Ace. Thank you po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Louis, thank, thank you. Ingat po. Father, thank you. Ha? Thank you rin. Naku, ha? Talagang uh, blessing ito nga pagsari ko dito. Ha? Yeah. Oh, ma Maalay nyo na po, sir, yung mga activities ninyo. And oh, at the same right. time, masusuportahan din po yung activities po ninyo dyan sa organization ninyo. Talaga, oh, thank you Kasi, rin, ha? Isa lang po, sir, yung, ano, eh, yung objective. Eh. Uh, I think uh, your your vision and objectives are aligned with 
the vision and objectives po ng RMDU. So, napakaganda po ng opportunity. Ang lakas na na yung enforcement niya. Lalo na ngayon. Yes, Maganda sir. yung sinabi niyo mo kanina. Yung tungkol doon sa tactical medicine, yung mga <coughs> innovative uh, training. No? Training talaga, formation. Uh, yes, sir. Um, Madalas, sir, yan yung ano eh, yan yung pagka sobrang dami na ng trabaho, minsan nakakalimutan, sir, yung development. Uh, which is, uh, para sa akin, sir, i- i- hindi dapat, sir, kalimutan yun eh, at the end of the day. Yan din po, sir, yung babalikan, babalikan mo, sir. Minsan, trabaho ng trabaho, trabaho ng trabaho, akala mo relevant pa yung ginagawa mo, relevant pa yung competencies mo. It turns out, marami na palang bago, marami na palang learnings and then nag-iba na pala yung environment mo. Pero you're still stuck with the old or tradition. So the only way sir na ma-address yun is tra- ta- constant training talaga sir. Nakita mo miss ka na ganun binigay ng America yung <clears throat> yung kanilang uh, resources sa uh, sa mga Afghanistan ano? Yes sir. Uh, yes sir. Security and police service. Walang nangyari ano? Na- nakita niyo sir? Two decades, di ba, sir? Two decades na nandun sila. And then, mm. nung umalis sila, sir, nabuyang-yang, sir, yung katotohanan. Parang mm. parang as if hindi sila dumating. Ganun ka, ano, naging dependent sila. And then, I don't know, maybe, mahirap, sir, i-judge ko ano yung ginawa nila. Pero ang, ang point lang, sir, is the end justifies the means, sir. Um, ano na, what, what is the 20 years occupation there worth parang ano so, po yung impact given ang uh, analysis ng iba yung talagang uh, ngayon sa Vietnam ideology pag hindi malagas yung uh, idea sa ideology philosophy of life yung talagang moral fibers ba hindi lalaban yun eh hindi hindi tatayo hindi magkakaroon ng paninindigan tsaka corruption din ang lakas ng corruption Yeah. Lahat yung mga sweldo ng mga polis at saka mga security na kukuha ng mga officers, hindi binibigay at saka ng mga politicians. Ay, no, it's, it's a cyclic. Yung nangyayari ni siguro ito in a small way. Pero kailan talaga ang laki ng laban natin ngayon. <laughs> Ikaw, ano nga palagay mo doon sa ano, yung evacuation? Grabe. Ah, sir. Nakita mo sir yung, ano, yung flight. Yung flight. Hindi hindi lang siguro sir nakita na hindi lang hindi lang siguro sir natin na document yung nangyari sa Vietnam noon eh. But I think it's it's almost the same na 'di ba sir paalis na yung mga last flights pa doon sa Kabul tapos so, yung uh, I, I'm sure it's the same sir the just choming uh, choming city ng sa Vietnam noong araw. I think it's the same. Ah, na, ang nabasa ko nun, sir, ganyan. May nabasa din, sir, ako eh. Parang war story nung araw. Kasi may hilig, sir, ako magbasa ng ganyan eh. Maraming ganyan yung tatay ko nun. And I remember, uh, the last few weeks ng US occupation sa Vietnam, it's mm-hmm. the same, sir, kung ano nakikita natin sa TV ngayon with Afghanistan. Um, people are scrumming. People are very afraid. Mm-hmm. So, the transition kasi, sir, yun yung problema yung change management. Which is, pag wala kang change management, sir, wala kang succession planning, eh, ganyan na ganyan, sir. May it be war, war-torn cities or regular, sir, na organizations, katulad PNP or um, units, sir, na wala po succession planning. Pag alis nung chip, yun, dun, dun mo mararamdaman, sir. If, if the... Tulad sa amin, sa mga pare, pagka alis ng rektor, ako, umpis na naman sa zero. <laughs> Ayun nga, sir. Which is, wow. which is yun, sir, ano, yun yung function, sir, ng PGS. Yun yung function ng PNP Patrol Plan 2030 para may continuance siya, sir. Regardless 20, of sino maupo. Why is it 2030? Ano yun ang target niya, 2030? Um, there are a lot of things sir na nag-surface diyan pero from my from my own um idea sir at the same time na uh, when talking to people why 2030 kasi sir uh, 2009 sir ito na conceptualize eh. and way back then 
2009, so 10 siya. So 20 years panser yung nilagay nila. Um, I talked to one officer, I just forgot sir yung kung sino nagsabi sabi sa akin sir neto. Um, eventually sir, people, some people hindi makukonvince eh. In, in a change. So, hmm. it takes a lifetime. Meron mga officers na kahit na siguro mag-retire na sila, hindi sila maniniwala sa PNP Patrol Plan 2030. Kaya 20 years, sir, baka pwede na mag-optional yung tao ko ayaw mo pa rin sumunod. <laughs> Pero it's just, a, it was just a theory and I don't know if it has solid foundation. Pero what is, what is ano, sir, um, hindi, nung, nung tinignan namin, sir, yun, bakit nga ba 2030 of all the years, Uh, wala siyang wala siyang ano eh wala siyang lo, wala siya masyadong hindi siya tinayin doon sa election supposed to be sir dapat elections eh uh, di ba sir tayo three years six years yun yung transition period natin so if you're going to make a short term uh, plan dapat three years enough for you na dumating ka sa next election kasi magiging irrelevant ka na kung pag napalitan yung presidente palit ng GPNP palit din lahat ng tao sa ibaba di ba sir Ganun yung turnaround time. On the other hand, sir, six years kasi yun yung presidente. Pero wala eh. Hindi yun yung naging basis. Ngayon, bakit 2030? Eh, yung ano naman, sir, ambition 2040. Ngayon, ang, eh, parang siguro, sir, magandang painggal lang, 2030. <laughs> Hindi ko rin alam, sir, of course. Um, good question yun, sir. And I'm still trying to find uh, yung reason why. Ayala Foundation. Ay, Ayala. Kami nung, kasi mga kamagana ko, mga Ayala Corps sila. 50 years ang ano nila. Ang, uh, kaya nung gumawa ng plan, Ayala, Ayala Corporation, 50 years since By the way, uh, nag-aano siya sa messenger eh. Nakakausap mo ba siya? Sino sir? Si Benji, pagkat doon? Oh, sir, na, na, na may Benji, message. Benji, bagay. Yes, sir, na may message ko siya, sir. Okay, sinabi yeah. ko yung sinabi. No, di ba, nagtapos tayo mag-usap. After natin oh. mag-usap, sir, message ko siya. Tapos sinabi ko nga, kausap kita. And then, ini-encourage mo nga siyang sumama sa rock. <laughs> uh, tuma- oh. Tumawa lang, eh. Tumawa lang, tumawa. Layo niya kasi, pero sasama yun. Pero magandang nga. Kasi, tinimin, for ano, more than 10 years, sa uh, tinulungan niya ako sa Kalawan, eh. Hmm. Halos every month mupunta siya. Kakatuwa. Okay. Sige, thank you very much, ha, Major. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, anytime, sir. Um, anyway, sir, I, I apologize, sir, dun sa mga konting glitches. Hindi tayo nakapag-upisa agad kanina. Kaya medyo na late din tayo. Yung presentation ko naman, sir, uh, I, I really tried to... Uh, So, pinaikli ko talaga as much as possible. Marami pa akong gusto sabihin, pero I, I don't think that's the gist. Hindi, so, tuwan-tuwa ako sa meeting na to. Talagang you, uh, nakakabuhay. <laughs> yeah, that's good, sir. I'm, I'm glad to know. Uh, si Mrs. na nakako, uh, ano, na, nakapag-attend nung ano. Yes, sir. Nung, Uh, actually, appreciative po lahat ng family for for what you've done, sir. Um, yun nga, sir. Ang, ang mahirap kasi, sir, dito yung dahil biglaan nga siya. And then, wala naman, sir, sa puder namin yung nanay. Just so happened, sir, na uh, ganun ang nangyari. So, ang hirap, sir, nung at the end of the day, ikaw lang yung nasa hospital. Um, syempre, you're, you're also asking people, yung misis ko, na, she's asking for their for her relatives at that time pero nobody was there so kami yung nag-asikaso sa hospital um and then nung namatay na nga uh, the problem was uh, yung burial naman niya uh, ganun pala sir no hindi mo pala mapapakremate o ma mapaasikaso yung burial nang wala pang death certificate So, para i-release na hospital yung death certificate, bayad. <laughs> yun ang hihingin sa'yo, bayad. Eh, sir, sa anim na oras, 160,000 agad. Ganon ka laki yung ano. So, sabi namin, saan kami kukuha? Saan, saan kamay ng Diyos namin kukuha na yung ganon kalaking pera? So, sabi ko kay misis, ah, sangla ko na yung sasakyan. Para may makuha agad tayo, di ba? 
Ayun, buti na lang yung misis ko, sir. May kaibigan siya na tumulong, sir, sa kanya. And pinautang muna siya, sir. So, medyo nakaluwag-luwag, sir, kami. Na bayaran agad namin, sir, yung ano, na-release yung death certificate. Then, uh, inaskyaso na lang namin, sir, yung, ano, yung, yung cremation niya, which amounted to 60,000. Another na naman yun, sir. Buti, may, nag, may nagpadala ulit galing in the U.S. So, ganun. Ano, asa na yung earn ngayon na ano yun na ba na ano uh, na sa ano sa creep yung hindi sir andi andi to pa sir sa amin um we're working Nanay, with asa bahay namin yes. already fifteen years na hindi na nating andi na sa bahay namin mukang ano naman yung bahay na one time we'll invite you or mga okay. antik yung bahay namin mukang church Tapos yes sir pan-chapel. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, oh, okay naman so far, sir. I mean, uh, we're just taking it in strides. Kasi uh, mahirap, sir, yung ano eh. At the end of the day, sir, kasi someone has, someone has to take care. Hindi uh, mm. pwedeng hindi namin asikasuhin. Hassle yung ganyan. Lalo na pagka hospital burial na po hirap talaga. Yes, kaya kaya, kaya y- y- yun sir yung ano yun yung isa sa well hindi naman re- matagal ko nang realize na may ganyan sir eh. just Pag gusto mo yung uh, earn uh, one of these days na magmisa tayo din lang tayo sa taas sa uh, church namin tayo lang. Sige sir. Tayo lang tayo, no? Just malapit lang ba kayo kuya sa kayo nakatira? Dito sir sa Pasig. Um, pwede naman namin sir i-travel and then we could just uh, para para for for her. But ngayon nine days every sun, every morning 6:30 yun pa. Narinig yes, ko ba? Minensyon namin. Yeah. Opo sir, opo sir. Nakaririnig nga po, nakakatuwa nga po sir. Sir, uh, meron din po sir tayo isang kasama natin. I think si Pems Carlos na matayan din po yata siya. I'll just ask lang po yung tao ko, sir, kung uh, maybe pwede rin po natin, sir. Yung pangalan. Apo, apo, apo. Uh, tomorrow we... Sige, Major, thank you very much, ha? Kaya lang kang magiging kernel. Ah, matagal ka po, magiging... sir. <laughs> Hindi na. <laughs> okay na lang din, sir. General. Ay, hindi na, sir. Hindi <laughs> na. Sige, sir. Sige, sir. Thank you sir, Sige. salamat po. Okay, Thank you sir. Thank you po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Kamusta ba yung uh, yung ano, pagsasalita ko diyan, malinaw ba? Yes sir, meron lang medyo glitches. I mean, uh, siguro sir internet yung problem. Okay. Pero internet ay? ano eh, uh, stable. Ah, uh, sir, unstable. Pero 100 Mbps kami rito, PLDT. P- PLDT. Uh, ganyan talaga si PLDT sir. Masanay ka na. Pag sinabi 100 Mbps, <laughs> medyo ka maniwala. Bawasan mo ng zero. <laughs> Talaga. Oo, sir. Ganyan yan. Stable, eh, oh. uh, stable Pero na nagsasalita ako, na naiintindihan ba? Nung, yes, sir. Nung, nung last week. Nagkakaroon yeah. lang ng glitches? Uh, naglalag lang siya, sir. Tapos bigla kang bumibilis ng sinasabi. Uh, yun ang kagandaan, sir, ng Zoom. Kasi yung Zoom, sir, Eh, uh, nire-record niya yung I think uh, several seconds. So kahit na mag-log ka, um, pag bumalik na yung internet mo, binabalik niya yung sinasabi mo. So kahit pa paano sir, nasasabi mo pa rin. Aba, naririnig naririnig pa rin namin. Na malakas ba yung volume? Ah, okay Kasi naman sir. Hindi malakas na malakas pero uh, audible naman sir. Audible naman. Yes, sir. Kasi so, yung okay. technical namin dito, bata lang eh. Wala eh. Wala yung mga technician namin. <laughs> da, okay na, sir. Okay naman na deliver nyo naman. Yung yung bosses nyo naman din, sir, na na naiintindihan. Uh, uh, nag-emotional lang ako eh. Dahil sa tas na touch ako talaga. Yeah. Yes, sir. Congrats, yes, sir. Uh, Major General. Yes, sir. Major Maraming 